Hey everybody and welcome to episode 176 of the Revive Yourself podcast. Here we go. Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Have you got a health issue that just won't go away no matter what you try? Then welcome to the Revive Yourself podcast, where we reveal the secrets to long-lasting health by getting to the root cause of problems that no one else is talking about. So you can have more energy, clear skin, healthier hair, a leaner physique, more confidence, and most importantly, do the things you love and live the life you deserve. Here's your host, Ryan Martin. So people, welcome back to the show. This is episode 176. And we've got a fantastic show with you. It's um, a returning guest, someone that, you know, one of the things that this quote-unquote pandemic has allowed me to do is make some very good relationships with a lot of uh, extremely, I'd say, in, just intelligent, but pe- people that are are just great, great human beings and have got a lot to offer the world. And one of those guys has been at Tom Barnett. He's been on the show three times I think already we've had some fantastic conversations um his his video about how you can't catch a virus went viral I think back in June or maybe before that um and we've had some fantastic conversations and this one is no different we're going to go into what's going on in the world where we think things are going um what needs to happen um how it is over there for him in Oz in Byron Bay and then we go into food detoxification Tom's um, daily eating habits uh, and much more so it's a real fun episode as always the show is sponsored by www.reviveyourself.co and the shop there if you go to, go to the website click on the shop you have all the products and evolution organics and um, if you click on that we've got the, the, the living fuel supplement which is the best all-round product on the market market on the market on the market bar none two scoops of that is equivalent to 260 dollars worth of organic produce um, fantastic we've got the liver cleansers there for nature's answer with the liver support or milk thistle and um, all the clean soaps shampoos um, deodorants and toothpaste if you want anything from there dr bronner's for the soaps uh, green green people for the shampoos and um, for the deodorants um, then we've got some we've got the chemical free sun, sun cream from dr mccola and also the mushrooms from four sigmatic which are fantastic for the brain immune system um, mental clarity you know these, these things are fantastic just for building a building up a healthy internal environment um, and everything else there, probiotics from Dr. McCona. Talking of probiotics, if you head down to the Bioptimizers link on the Revive Self shop, then you're going to get what Bioptimizers call the Navy Seal of pro, Navy Seals of Probiotic, or we'll call it the SBS if, if because we're in the UK of the probiotic world. Um, they've not only been shown to create a healthy internal environment, but if you're ever dealing with food poisoning, if you go abroad somewhere, Taking 10 to 20 of these will knock food poisoning out flat because they will literally clean up your internal environment. Um, also from bio-optimizers, we've got the mass enzymes and systemic enzymes there. So these can be used to help digest food as well as using them on an empty stomach to clean up any debris in the body. Uh, and also the HCL. So if you're dealing with some gut issues and you have low stomach acid, you suffer things from things like acid, re- acid reflux or GERD, then the HCL and enzymes will be perfect for you. But uh, that's only if it's a little issue. If it becomes a chronic one, then you need to really heal your gut. But these things will be fantastic for helping stoke your digestive fires. Remember, after the age of 30, people's digestive enzymes and HCL start to deplete. So these are very, very important. And that comes from alcohol, stress, um, poor food choices, um, toxic water, etc. So these products are, are great. Then Ancient Purity, if you go there... Fantastic options for nature and purity with the royal jelly, which is what the queen bee exclusively eats, full of amino acids. Once again, the properties, the health boosting properties are vast. It's been used, this is what Bruce Lee used to use in his morning tea combined with uh, some ginseng. Uh, so the royal jelly is great. The pearl powder, fantastic to have orally or topically for any blemishes on your face. The vitamin C and vitamin D, the liposomal li- versions, you know, they get absorbed straight away. And, and there's things that you should have in your cupboard at all times, especially in the winter months, um, moving, 
it's only around about June, July we actually start to get the UV through in the UK that can actually stimulate the cholesterol and the immune system under the skin. So the vitamin D is essential. The liposomal version is fantastic from Ancient Purity. Um, and all their products are, are, are great. And it's moving a lot into this, all the whole, same moving a lot, but they're moving into their own their own brand. And it's all whole food-based um, products, which which are which are vital um, you know your body can, it's highly bioavailable so your body can actually break them down um, then you know if you you've got the essential oils from my man dr nick berry if you're heading over to www.essentialoilwizardry.com you put in the code revives you get 10 percent off of all the best essential oils on the planet bar none um, and blueblocks.com b-l-u-b-l-o-x.com for the best blue blocking glasses on the planet for my man andy manf once again put in the code Revive, maybe Revive 10 and you'll get 10% off. It might be, I think it's Revive 10 or Revive 15. <laughs> Give it a go um, and you're going to get money off there. I always like to bring you the products that I use myself because, you know, it, it's it's no good me. I, don't, I would never promote anything I wouldn't use myself. Throughout the years, we've had so many companies coming to us trying to get, get us to sell their products and I've got no interest. I only use and, and, and will promote things that I myself use. Um, then we go on to Memon. Memon, which we are, this is the EMF blocking devices. We're going to have some other stuff on the shop very soon with biogeometry, but the Memon products stop the, um, the, the, the power of the 5G interfering with you. And you've got products there for your car, for your own body, and also for your house. The Combi product on the uh, Memon website is fantastic you put it into the wall and it builds a false field around your house and uh, so it stop any of the 5g coming in so that's it for the intro here without any further ado is tom barnett enjoy the show and i'll see you on the other side <laughs> <clears throat> mm. yeah just it's at least it makes them like they'll be like mm, it might make them angry or something and they'll uh you know eventually they'll have something that comes comes as a result you know at least it's just like this thing that's in the back of their mind now mate it's uh yeah it triggered a lot of people it was uh, that video i think it was i think it was the first one i, I spoke to my dad my dad was in stitches you know the homer simpson thing where he goes and gets people in fear and he's like uh, 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 and he runs down the yeah. stairs wherever he is i was cracking up and uh there's, there's another bit you put in there as well it was uh, i can't remember there was some there was some comedy comedy bits of it which were which, which make the point right and um yeah. it's amazing how how brainwashed people still are 11 months that in this thing and since our first conversation i think it was in june or july um you know there's been so much evidence coming out showing how much of a scam this is across every single facet for the fact you can't even catch a virus then to the fact that um even if you said you could it's like 99.98 percent survival rate then like you know it, from two weeks to flatten the curb to uh to um Getting uh, wearing three masks and getting an anal swab now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought it was a joke, hey, the anal thing. I thought people were just making memes, just for, to like imagine if they did that, and then I'm like, oh, what? It's a real thing. <laughs> oh, it's a real thing, mate. It's, you know, you know that handmade Sonic. They they work. They like to laugh at their uh, their uh, the people that they're putting um, under their spells or whatever. And you know, I've got people that it's funny. All my friends that have their own businesses and all like, in self development and work themselves, they all know this is the same people like myself or, and and you. They all know. Um, they all have open minds. All my friends that went to apart from me went to private school. They're all in like mm-hmm. middle management and like doctors and lawyers. They're completely and utterly brainwashed. And even it doesn't matter how much evidence you show them. I think I put that post about the KGB in the 60s and they worked out um, if you expose someone to to two months of information on, on a topic, keep on exposing them. After that two months, nothing to the contrary will change their mind. Yeah. Uh, even Did you see Tom Cowan and uh, Dr. Kaufman's interview on Subconscious Podcast? No. Um, well, it was the good, basically got them on there to talk about how, you know, it's right, and they've been isolated because people keep on putting articles up saying it has been isolated, uh, and they point to these things and and they rip it apart, saying no, they're saying it's been isolated, but it hasn't. He said if you if you wanted to isolate, uh, for example, caffeine, would it be the whole coffee bean, or would you have to actually isolate caffeine? And, and this is what they were saying, long and short of it. And they were saying, well, yeah, of course you wouldn't. You have to take out the polyphenols and all the other all the other parts of the bean. 
before you can isolate it. And so they haven't done that in any single test. And, you know, I put something up the other day, like the definition of isolated. And it's amazing how people are still, you know, but that's not how you isolate a virus. Oh, isn't it? All right. <laughs> Have you had any uh, hit back on that at all? No. Nah. No, I didn't even know that. I don't really hear what goes on if people are doing podcasts and stuff, but it's, um, but I mean, the principle is the same for anything. It's the whole propaganda model. So yeah, people won't really hear it. It'll always, it doesn't matter how much sense it makes or how truthful it is. They just won't hear it, but that's, this is part of it. But that's interesting though that they, that, I mean, it's the same as I remember uh, probably a year before the whole Corona hoax, there was, uh, I just got onto Facebook and then a uh, old school friend had posted a link about um, <clears throat> um, a study in Denmark or somewhere like that where 650,000 people were studied and it proves conclusively the vaccines do not cause autism. And then she had some comment like, see, just like, you know, science to, to the rescue or something like that. And I, I remember putting on there, I was like, hey, um, you might want to find out who did that study or whatever before you go posting things like that and where the money came from and whether that's a legit study or whatever. And they they couldn't hear it. Heaps of people were trying to gang up on me. And I was like, hey, look, I'll give you five grand. I didn't even have five grand, but I was like, I'll give you five grand if you can, um, you know, show me that that's a legit study. And all of a sudden, and I've done this plenty of times, nobody wants to do it. I'm like, surely you don't, surely that'd take you about what, half a day maybe at the most I know what job you do. I know you're making like 30 bucks an hour maximum in your full time job, you know. So why are you not wanting to take five grand for maybe half a day's work? That doesn't make sense. What's going on? And nobody ever, I put this challenge out a lot of times, whether it's a thousand, five thousand, ten thousand, whatever. Nobody ever, ever has come back and, and said, they'll just write some sentence from their own thing and go, I want my money now. And it's like, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't come to the challenge. You didn't handle it at all. You didn't answer the question. But isn't it weird? It's like if I was so sure that like these headphones are made out of plastic and then somebody goes, no, nah, they're not. They're not. They're made out of metal. I'll give you 10 grand if you can show me they're made out of plastic. I'll be like, dude, I'll take that 10 grand. You watch me. I'll go get a test on it. I'll do whatever. I'll whatever. It, you know what I mean? I would do it because I'm 100% sure that's plastic, not metal. And I want 10 grand. Well, I don't, I take half a year to make 10 grand. I don't make it in an hour. So why wouldn't I? So why do all these people when they're challenged never take up the challenge? Yeah. None oh. ever. And I've done it with, I've done it in, uh, Q and A's, like public Q and A's, as in anyone can come into the civic hall. When I was doing the, um, political campaign, anyone that thought we were full of shit could come in and call us on it. And I'd say, well, look, if you've got evidence that any of these vaccines do what you're saying or whatever, Here's some money. And public notice means that you, you're you liable for that. And I would say if it was on the internet too, I'd say consider this public notice. If anybody comes up with what I'm asking, this is public notice that I am liable or I am good for the, the money, which means that because it's public notice, I can be taken to a court trial or whatever because, you know, and nobody takes it up ever. One of my first mentors would do that and people used to hate it. Because it's just like you put some. It's like, well, if you're so, if you're confident, if you know, then, then do it. And I, used to, I, in fact, it's something I used to do as well. Quite like I, actually, I don't know why I stopped doing it, but it does just put people straight in their place. It's like, well, if you if you think you're so correct, here you go. Because this is this is like um, this is like it's, I said to someone before. It's easy to have an opinion. One of my friends is like, it doesn't matter. It's so far gone, some of them. It's like it's easy to have an opinion when nothing that you do has um, any consequence to it for example yeah. if i'm incorrect about what i do my clients don't get better my reputation goes down the pan i don't have a business okay therefore everything i do with my clients needs to be correct for me to have a successful business so i can continue to do what i do or even to have a decent reputation you know there's some skin in the game a lot of these people have, have been in this world for like 11 months, been reading articles in the mainstream, think they're an expert, haven't dealt with it. I say to them, this is the other thing you say to them, okay, well, if you disagree, how many people have you helped overcome any chronic illness, any infection, parasite problem, bacterial infection? And they don't answer. And you just going to say, no, 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 how many people? Oh, none. Cool. So maybe you should probably take some advice, or at least listen to people that have been doing it. Like I've helped over 7,000 people. I'm sure you've helped 
thousands yourself. I know you do even now when you're talking to people. It's like, and then it's funny when they, they put some stuff out. Or someone said something the other day to me on, on a post because I mentioned um, about how many how much, uh, prescription painkillers in America. I think we're talking about other things. And she was like, um, you're just saying this because you, cause you want people to, to buy your stuff. And I was like, well, yeah, I'm a business. So, yeah, I, I do want people to, to have my services because, one, I know they get better. And two, yeah, I'm a business. And, and three, I put out so much information for free. That's not a problem. Um, and she, and I said, maybe if you want to discuss it with any of my clients, they'd be happy to talk to you. And she's like, oh, um, you, something like you, sometimes you just get lucky. I was like, well, I'm probably the luckiest man in the world then because <laughs> I've been doing this for 12 years. I must be the fucking luckiest person in the world. And they can't, they can't like see through it. It's like, and they're saying, um, she was like, my, my uncle died of cancer. Uh, and and he didn't get medical treatment. I was like, well, he probably lived longer because he didn't get medical treatment. Yes. You know, eighty five percent of oncologists asked wouldn't get their own treatment. Um, and and uh, I can't remember what I was. And, and I was just like, you can because we've been me. No, we've been doing this for so long, Tom. People say stuff to us, and it's just like someone said to me, "You've always got the answer." I was like, yes, because I've been doing this a long time. I know. And it's like people, as you said, I think I remember you saying just what you said there about that study. Something comes out, someone put this up to me once, and I was like, fucking hell, they said about how something was bad, um, or carbohydrates, or something like a heavy carbohydrate diet was, was good for like, but I was telling what it was, and I was like, can you just go and look who done that study? And he, and he was like, what do you mean? I was like, have a look, General Mills. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like what, the, guy, the, the guys that fucking sell all the corn and the grain. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like, yeah, I think you said on one podcast once, you know, people don't ever look into this. So I, I think I saw one of your videos. You were saying, I could do a study that proved that, that daylight didn't exist. Oh, yeah. I'd do it between the hours of 10 p.m. and 3 a.m. over a year. Say, well, look, daylight doesn't exist. It's a myth. And that's what I think it's very important. But that's something that people never do. They never look into the agenda. Of people behind these studies and that's really important right i mean one of the first things you should do yeah yeah what yeah it is one of the first things absolutely it's like it's like somebody giving advice the first thing you should ask is like who's this guy like oh brian okay he's done this for 12 years and he's got a list of clients that he's helped who i can all, i can talk to any of them and they can back it up so then what you're saying but it's, it's like or you get the health minister of bloody you know somebody that looks like a fridge with a head and you're just like uh, nobody's going, hang on, who is this telling me about health? You know, no, they don't ask that, but that, that usually would be the first thing. It's like, is this guy a sleazy car salesman or is he an honest guy? Like, nobody's making that distinction when it comes to this sort of thing, but they do when it is time to buy a car, for example. So it's like, why this disconnect? Yeah, 100. Mate, I think that the, the, the actual post up up was, um, if the government really, if the government big pharma really cared about your health, so why would every single hospital have their hallways lined with vending machines full of chocolate bars, packets of crisps, fizzy drinks, and processed food? You know, I said nothing about hospitals shout or scream health and healing. They're all about disease, the clinical atmosphere, it's terrible food, like worse atmosphere. And um, you know, I said. Look at the contrast between a health spa, you go in, you know, like essential oils, good music, plants, you're like, oh, okay, this is like, you feel that, you can feel the vibrations. You walk into a hospital and it's like, it's probably what I'd imagine hell is like. Yeah, yeah. it's depressing. Yeah, fucking depressing, right? Depressing, clinical, no flowers, no colour, um, no, the only aroma is like the terrible plate, almost plain food you get in there. Um, all the do- all the nurses are massively overweight. All of them. Um, the doctors look like death. And I said, someone, one of these, um, oh, there's another, because I know what you said about, you called out when you called out the other geezer. The other guy, I can't remember his name, is a Wally, um, who called you out before saying about lick up the bowler. But there's another guy called Jamie something in England. He's like a PT. He's got quite a big following. And he's just a complete and utter Wally. Uh, and he came out about saying, I'm going to take the vaccine or something. I was like, before you start giving health advice, mate, you probably want to not look like you've got stage four pancreatic cancer. Probably the best, <laughs> probably the best option. You know, before you start telling people what to do, what you're going to inject in yourself, you might have sold a few fitness books, but, uh, you know, when it comes to like vaccines, it's like someone said the other day, I was like, I've been studying these companies for 12 years. It's like, um, I did a thing on Pfizer and it's just like, I don't know how you can even trust these people. It's like Robert Kennedy Jr. said, like these companies, their um, business model is committing crime. 
right? Mm. 35 billion in the top four have paid out in a, uh, in fines, penalties, damages for falsifying science, bribing officials, um, killing ten, hundreds of thousands of people. But yeah. you get these people because they've got a bit of a following and people don't have a clue. So that guy, I think his name's Jamie Smith or whatever PT, he's like, I'm going to be taking the vaccine. All you guys that don't, fuck off, anti vax like, Cool. Get one, mate. In fact, get four. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah you, can, good, you can have mine and Ryan's too. Get yeah, like you 15. <laughs> you can have them all, mate. And um, it's no matter how much you see. And like, it's like you've seen the, 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 the censorship that's going on now, though, Tom. That's the thing because, you know, even the there's a couple of um, pages on Instagram that are posting the vaccine reactions. And it's funny how, like, if someone dies 28 days after testing positive, quote unquote, for COVID, it's a COVID. It doesn't matter if they had cancer, leukemia, you know, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Someone dies within, someone dies one day after getting a vaccine. <clears throat> Not the vaccine. It's, no. uh, I mean, I think it was a, the equinox or uh, something like that, you know. Yeah. It's just like, it, it, and the censorship to it that anyone posting anything, you just get taken down. And this is why we talk about going to a different platform, but, it's right now for people that hear this. So it's like um, having to get them to um, get off of Google, get off of a lot of these things because if, if they're not on Quant, Ecoza, or or that, that go looking for stuff, they're just never going to find anything. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, Robert Kennedy got uh, axed off of Instagram, and he said, like he said in his quote, he said, "Nothing that I put up has been." Um, uh, so nothing, uh, everything I've put up, sorry, has been from all the government websites, every single yeah. stat. And I've yeah. done it before. I think Peter Cronin said it. He was like, he got, I said, I got fact checked when I just got the information off the government website. I put up stats from the CDC and he said, this is um, dangerous information. I was like, it's on the CDC website. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's so funny, eh? It's, it's so it's, funny. It's, it's funny to us because we can see it, but people were like, someone put my post the other day. Yeah, I always go to fact checkers to make sure something's correct. And I was like, fucking hell. I was like, if you knew how much money these companies spent to hide the truth from you, you'd shit a brick. Like, we're talking tens of billions, like billions, billions and billions of, of, of dollars, yeah. pounds. Um, yeah. And when you're getting rid of a Kennedy, you know, mm-hmm. one was shot, one's been censored. Yeah. Yeah, well, also, if anyone doesn't know, his uh, website is childrenshealthdefense.org, so you can still keep up with what he does. Yeah. Not just all on social media. You're, yeah, you're, it's a good thing though, eh? It's like, hey, it's, somebody's getting axed like that. It's like, maybe they're onto something. I should follow them more deeply. Yeah. And, well, they always say when they can't beat you with facts, you know, they, they just censor people. Put Vernon. Yeah. And he's been, um, very, like, I mean, he was bad. And Del Big Tree as well. I think he's been taken off. You know, yeah. Del Big Tree? Yeah. 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 High wire. Yeah. High wire. Um, so have, have you been banned from Facebook? Uh, only temporarily. Um, um, I haven't been. Yeah, it's weird. I um, yeah, it's weird. I I haven't been banned yet off Facebook. I'm I'm definitely shadow banned. Like my live streams, no matter what time of day I went on, I'd get three eighty to four hundred people on a live stream, and then it was three hundred, and then it was with the followers still increasing in number. My live stream numbers were going down, and the recent ones have been somewhere between seventy and a hundred. And, uh, like they still get around eventually afterwards, but it's just like, I'm definitely shadow banned and everyone on YouTube keeps messaging me and saying, Hey, I never got your notification when the, when the videos go up and stuff. So, um, it doesn't matter because I've got my own platform anyway. All that stuff's backed up. We're just waiting to launch it. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. What's it called? Tom TV. Oh, right. Okay. So it's, a, this would be a website, right? Yeah, it's a website. We're getting an app to go with it as well so people can do um, – because one of the things that people keep saying is they want, like, a platform where they can all discuss stuff as well. So you can, like, meet people. Like, the amount of people in the UK that I've spoken to, they're just like, oh, no one around here knows – like, everyone's just masked up and muzzled and nobody knows what's going on. It's depressing. And I'm like, well, I was told of quite a few people about you. I said, well, at least follow Ryan. Like, he's got a good following. Maybe you can meet somebody within his network, but it's kind of – you know, I think we need like a forum or something as well where mm. people can go on and they're like, I'm from this town. Who's who's from here? Like, who can I chat to? Or yeah, i got to know somebody else around here knows what's going on and I'm not just going to go insane and whatever. Like, I'm super lucky here, I guess, because almost everyone I talk to is just, you know, knows it's a scam and is on the same page. So I can imagine it must be a bit lonely if you're somewhere where 
you are the only one thinking thinking that you are the only one. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I well, when I was in England, because I've been doing what I've been doing for a long period of time, like my family know, um, and they know straight, like they know because of because of me. But if you don't, it, it can be a lonely place, and um, a lot of people. This is why I come out here to Mexico because it's like a group of people that are all open minded. Um, friend here, he's from the US. He used to be part of, part of corporate America, and he's he come over here. He's taken the leap of faith, and you know, everyone. We've got people from Canada, America, out here, the UK. Um, and it's great having conversation with people that actually know what's going on and, and, and looking for solutions rather than just problems, rather than talking to people. Like, it's just, it's just at this point, it, one of my friends, I think I mentioned it before, one of my friends who owns a company called Ancient Purity, he does like natural, um, he tells like natural health um, supplements and products and all like top stuff, all, all very, very pure. He does like things like, he loves like a, a flower of life carafes. He's massively into like, um, into a very health, very good company. And he was saying at the start, he was like, no, we'll be all right. And then about three months ago, he was like, right, I didn't realise how asleep people are. He said, I actually thought there'd be a kickback. And, he's, and I said, this is why I said, mate, I just stood, stood and fought, fought in the UK. But there's literally no one, like you're on your own. When I see pictures of like two policemen beating people up, I saw one the other day, it was disgusting, I pulled an old lady off a chair, um, like beat some guy up for opening his gym like eight of them smashed rock out this guy I'm sitting there like going lucky I'm not there because I would literally I'd probably be trapped away for life because I, I, I hate injustice and things like that and I'm like this is where we have a stab and fight but because people don't fight we could, you'll be the only one in um, and it's why like getting communities like this around um, that we've got here and looking forward to one day coming over to, to you my man I've got, I've got clients in Australia as well yeah. they seem to be pretty um, like Nick, I saw Nick was actually on um, an interview with, I think it's RV, is it? I think one of the guys that's like alternative media. But Nick's really, open, like, he's a great person. He's, um, you know, he's very awake. Clients over there. Um, there's people that are awake, but that's why like, I said, when people join my program, I said, the old people, a bunch of people that are awake, they make friends there. And even on my Facebook, I said, talk to each other. Like, talk. Because that's how you're going to meet people. You make friends from it. That's yeah. how, well, I didn't know apart from my friend I'll come out here I didn't know and Terry so I've known Terry Tillard for a long time but the rest of the people I've only met them for like the last three months but they're all this click because they're all people like like yourself and so why, why is Byron quite um how comes people there are pretty open to this is it because they know that someone like yourself has been quite vocal about this going on for a while no it's because um back in the 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 dawning of the age of Aquarius in like the eighties or something, a lot of people had converged to this area for that particular thing and just kind of stayed. So it was like really, especially in the seventies and eighties and stuff, like Mullumbimby, which is a nearby town, just inhabited by hippies and things. So everybody in this region has always been a bit more alternative and open minded. It's kind of it's always been like the anti vax capital of Australia, like the lowest number of vaccinated people are in this particular region. Not just Byron Bay, it's like the surrounding area. Like Byron's a bit like it's just a tourist town, so it's more the um, the surrounding areas. And so, uh, yeah, so most people have just been that minded anyway. It's just that kind of area. It's a pretty powerful area too. Like with there's a lot of reasons that it it is like this and it attracts this kind of um, crowd. There's still all the mental people as well, but there's a large number of people that are uh, switched on. And part of it is because there's a uh, one of the main ley lines of the Earth runs through Byron. So it's an energetically oh, okay. uh, powerful area. It's like the first place that the light hits in Australia as well. It's the most easterly point of Australia. And so there's a lot of lot of reasons it's a it's a it attracts the right people. Okay, it's interesting. I thought usually when there's things like ley lines and energetic like powerfully energetic places, the um you know the the other side tend to build cities there. You know, they tend to get to get a stronghold. So it's Quite yeah. refreshing to hear that you guys have got that. It'd be a nice experience. I hear it's yeah. I mean, always people always talk about how um, almost I I it is in Byron Bay or around that area. Um, and but to be fair, like it's great here. I mean, some people wear masks, but most don't. You, everything's open. You know, shops, yeah. bars, restaurants, gyms, nothing shut. Everyone's moving around normal. The Mexicans don't really. They're just like they don't really. Someone offers you a hand sanitizer, you say no. They're like yeah, fine. Like, I mean, the cartel as well. The cartel basically runs things. So, yeah. like, we don't shut things down because we like money. 
you yeah, know, and exactly. so and so that's where one of the reasons. Um, but yeah, because apart, it's, it's weird how you get the one side in Australia that's so far gone. I think that's is that um, Victoria. Yeah. Yeah, and then so you're on opposite sides. No, just further, like directly above, just like however many thousands of k's. I forget how many, three thousand right. kilometers or something. Okay, and that's and that's come and that's come completely like tyrannical, and you're you're still able to not wear masks. Everything open where you are. Yeah, everything's open. No one wears masks. I've, I think I've seen like three people in total over the last six months wearing a mask voluntarily. Really? Yeah. So that's perfect. Everything's open. So you literally, it's not even a problem. No, there was a, there was like some kind of lockdown a, a while ago, like April when I made that video, when, um, where gyms and things were closed, they weren't allowed to open. But as far, but, you know, shops, a lot of shops were still open, especially because they serve food and things like that. And, you know, everyone was still just out going surfing, going to the beach, just hanging out in the parks. There was no, it didn't really get that heavy here at all. Um, but, you know, part of it, I think the reason Mexico is better is that you still, rain's pretty heavy, tell me if you can't hear me. Okay. But, um, yeah, you can um, still go and do a lot of things in Mexico because of the fact that it's run by, like, not a dictatorship, but essentially it is because it's, a, it's, a, it's run by drug money and stuff, which I think is a way more honest system to live in because you know exactly where you stand, whereas in our system it's a lot more tyrannical because the cops, which is the front line of defense for the, the real cartel of the, you know, the corporate banking systems and stuff, then they, they're not that, they're not that nice. They're all corrupt and stuff. So, um, I'd rather be amongst a drug cartel than the cartel that we have here, to be honest. A hundred percent. That's why they try to, um, stop you from coming here by telling you how dangerous it is and this, that. And it's like, well, of course they're going to say, cause I don't want you to leave. Um, yeah. and, you know, the cartel, and you don't do anything to them, they don't do nothing to you. They're exactly. Just, they're in their own thing, whereas the yep. police, uh, the police, where they say, uh, I'm just doing my job. It's like your your job, but your moral compass is so far off, you don't know which way's up. Like, yeah. you're, you're, you're like, arrest, someone the other day arrested uh, a man for feeding the homeless, and they put yeah, him right. in the back and all that, and I'm just like, it just blew up balls my blood. I'm like, how, how are you, where's, humani- where's the humanity gone? And this is what they're doing, right? They turn it into, and this is, um, well, it's, it's hard because one, one side of the thing is that things aren't going to get better because they keep pushing it. And the other thing is like more people are getting awake to it. Like they're trying to get this whole vaccine. I mean, they've been vaccinating so many people in, in the UK now. How, how are they going in, in Australia? The, the number's pretty high. Yep. Yeah. Pretty high. Yeah. The, the vaccinated. Any, anything come out about like anyone, um, any stories about in the mainstream about anyone getting injured from it or not? No. I- not here, I don't think. I mean, I don't, I don't see any stories anyway, so I don't, no, really, I don't really no. know. But yeah, I just know that, um, I know they falsify. So a little while ago, there was news polls on our local, like, uh, mainstream news channels, and they put up a poll, like, who's going to get the vaccine sort of thing. And then there was tons and tons of people saying no, and within an hour or so, they pulled the poll down. They pulled it down because they weren't getting the result that they expected to get. So, I think realistically, even the ones that are mainstream and pro-vaccine and all that sort of stuff, even they're kind of like, oh, I don't really know about this, mm-hmm. <laughs> this COVID mm-hmm. vaccine. You still, there's definitely people can't wait for it. They're going to line up for it. They're going to have a little party afterwards and get their lollipop from the doctor and all that. But um, taking majority of people, yeah, majority of people, I don't think are that excited. And at least half the people won't get it. At, at least. least half. Yeah, it's, it's just it's just with what they're trying to do around. I said to people all the time, I like, get messages through saying, "I'm worried about them stopping me from travelling." It's what that's what people will do. People will take it just because they want to go abroad. I mm. said, well, "At what point is your health worth like, a trip abroad? Like, would you rather take it and, and risk having serious injury and, and illness, maybe even death, or you not?" Yeah. And then I said, "To people, there's always ways around, ways around this anyway." As you said, either the common law route or um, from other other means. But um, with the common law thing, actually, I don't know if you saw it the other day, a guy, they actually, um, the judge threw out, basically, in England, a guy who, won the, he got arrested for speaking at Speaker's Corner, which is like the place of free speech, and he got arrested, and yep. he went to the court, and he had Dolores Cahill there, do you know Dolores Cahill? No, but is this the video you sent me, or is there an older guy standing outside the court telling what happened? I think there was three of them, there's two, yeah. two guys, I'm like, yeah, did you, did you watch it? Yeah. Yeah. 
And that that's that's quite shocking, right? When they're throwing out things like that. I mean, it's just they've gone against every every, every law and uh, every, but that we have. I mean, mm-hmm. if they can do that, but I said sometimes it's good because it will kick a reaction. Yeah. But, um, yeah, well, yeah. There's. Um, I'm not sure how well. See, the thing is, like, it's, it, people keep thinking that I'm like bad mouthing common law, but I'm not because it's still applicable. But I think when people are just going in under those, when the court is not a common law court, it's a court of commerce. So if you're not dealing with it on that level, then you you might just not be heard. There's different levels to it. It's like I forget the actual. Uh, the stage is but first it's like a commerce court and then it's a common law court and then it's an ecclesiastic no then it's a maritime then an ecclesiastic and then it's a it's a, a like under god's law it's like but each time they would leave the court and come back in they might be dressed differently or have a different head thing on it's like if a judge gets up and leaves and comes back it's now in a different jurisdiction altogether and How i think people meant to know this, this? Yeah, but see, people miss that. So then they think that they're still in the thing that they were just like having their argument about. But now the court has changed to a completely different jurisdiction. They're still stuck in common law or commerce land. And then, but the judges, like they don't tell you, hey, by the way, we're in a new jurisdiction now. You might want to change your tune. They don't say that. And so then they'll just throw out because they can't hear anything you're saying in that jurisdiction. And I think that's what happens when people do this. Or it's a setup. It's like, Let's get this guy that looks really respectable. And, oh, my God, Mr. Respectable can't even get anywhere with common law. How are we ever going to? So then people, like, lose faith. I don't know. I'm not saying it's a setup, but that's a possibility. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, you know, that's, there's just, that's, yeah. That's interesting that's, about jurisdictions. Like, how would you even know that? Like, I, I suppose I've even heard, of, even heard of that. Yeah, you've got to, uh, yeah, it just, it's, I think you'd learn it if you joined any of the standard uh, law group things that, um operate <laughs> I just don't know enough about which ones to send people to in different countries and all that but I know that like uh, Know Your Rights group and that in Australia they do that um, Nick Nick knows about this sort of stuff you know uh, Zev my mate here knows about this sort of stuff I'll do one with him when he's back and we'll go through all that sort of stuff so people can learn it because he's done it for like 25 years and um, yeah I'll, mm-hmm. I'll do one with him and I'll, I'll so they can go. literally leave the call and put on the different hat and it's in different jurisdiction if a judge does, yeah, because sometimes you'll stump the judge and they'll leave. You know, plenty of people have got it on YouTube or have given their accounts or whatever of what they've done. They've asked a certain question, the judge won't answer it, they'll get up and leave. And then they think that it's done, but it's not done. Generally, they just haven't waited and the judge will come back in, whether immediately or after a minute or so, and it's a different jurisdiction then. It's, um, yeah, that's just things change, so... Uh, again, wow. like courts are corrupt, though. It's like you, you, there's only a certain level. Like I've got out of all of the – any time I've gone to court for something like unlicensed driving, unregistered car, uninsured, all this sort of stuff, I've never lost. Like it's, I've got them thrown out or, or the ju- it's been like dismissed or uh, adjourned sine die, which means forever. It's like um, – it's like uh, – got to get up. I'm just going to shut signal down because otherwise calls will come in. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, but, but I'm not going high up. I'm in the local, the magistrate's level, and they kind of don't give a shit about your little unlicensed driving, that sort of stuff. But the higher up you go, if I was going up to start challenging the transport department on whether you actually have to have a license in the first place or have to register a car or start asking, hey, I don't own my car, do I? Doesn't the government own it? Because, like, sneakily by signing for registration, you sign the car over to the government. Like, if you start going to that level, the corruption isn't going to let you through. But at the low level of, hey, I don't want to pay this fine, then that's where you still get wins quite easily. But you're not going to get into those different levels of jurisdiction and all that by that, usually. In America, though, I've seen judges walk out over um, very minor things and then come back in and things like that. So... Yeah, but I'll do a podcast with Zeb because he's the man with that. Like, he knows all the ins and outs of the different things, what the different headdresses mean or no headdress or what this gown means as opposed to that gown or no gown. Like, I don't I don't give a shit about that stuff, so I don't know it, but he knows all that stuff, so I'll interview him and share that with you. Well, no, it's interesting. And then, and then if they don't answer it in my jurisdiction, they come in at high jurisdiction, they can just throw it out. Is that what you're, you're saying? Uh, yeah, well, it doesn't apply then. So if you're talking about... Commerce, that's a different jurisdiction to maritime and it's a different jurisdiction to ecclesiastic law. So it's a different, different kind of rules and subsets of things and what applies and what doesn't. Um, 
commerce is still my favorite because it's literally just equity and it's literally just agreements. So then that's, that to me is the fairest, unless you get to God's law, which is the, you know, natural law. And that's the, that's the highest jurisdiction. And that's where at least the story, stories that I've heard, I've never seen it in my, with my own eyes, but that's where people, um, get a really fair, uh, interaction with the judge and the judge almost lets them run the show as far as some stories go, because Why? that's where natural law comes in, where no man is bound by uh, any laws except for nature's laws. We're not bound by man-made laws. Uh, we are living. We have rights. All that sort of thing is inherent in God and nature's laws. It's not inherent in commerce, and that's why you've got to differentiate yourself between the entity, the dead thing, the thing that's not alive, and the living being that has rights. So that... But in the higher jurisdiction, you don't have to make that distinction because you're in that jurisdiction as a living man or woman. And so the, the, but how do you get to that jurisdiction? How would you? So I don't know. Uh, I mean, it's more that it, you would stump the judge on all of the other levels. It's almost like, you know, like, um, the big boss, Bruce Lee. Mm-hmm. I think it's called Big Boss. He's like in this, uh, this storied house and he's on the lower level and he has to fight this guy and he beats him. So he gets up to the next level. He goes up the stairs to the next one and it's like a, a badder guy and then he fights him and he beats him and then he goes up to the next level and he fights him and he beats him and then he gets up to Imran Khan with the like foot that's that big. And, um, yeah, so it's a similar thing. You've got to get through the levels. I don't know if there's a way to just put yourself in that jurisdiction by speaking or handing over a document. Maybe there is, but I just haven't spent enough time in courts. That's not my thing. No. You know, I'm not like, Right. People keep asking me stuff, but I'm not the expert on this. It's like guys like Mark Patelik and Zev, guys that have done it for 20 years. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't gone in ever and represented another person in court. I don't even know how. So like, I'm not the person to ask for that sort of stuff. But these guys have been into courts for themselves. They've represented others. They've done all that and they know these sorts of systems. But for me, I just like court to me is like a bunch of kids playing with a big, big piece of dog shit. It's like, why do I want to go on in with a bunch of kids playing with dog shit? It doesn't interest me at all. Like, yeah. I like the beach. I like nature. I like, you know, I like my girlfriend. I don't, I don't like that sort of stuff. So I'm not like, hey, I'm interested in like, hmm, smells good, you know. It's like, I just don't care. Well, it's just in case you get there because of the, the laws they're putting in place. And because when you're getting fines or arrested for giving food to the homeless or yeah. for walking outside and breathing, then unfortunately, as much as I don't like playing with dog shit either. It's, uh, it's something that unfortunately we seem to need to know a little bit about just because to cover our own backs uh, and also not to let them just, to step, step way above their, they said that before they should be there to help and serve us and before it's like, do whatever you want as long as it doesn't hurt anyone, right? And if you start something hurting other people, then it's the, an issue and right now. It's the other thing about this whole, I think people, these, these, these people that are virtual signaling about wearing masks and all this other stuff. They have no idea how many people they're killing. They're like, oh, stay at home, save lives. It's like, no, no, stay at home, kill an extra 130 million people um, through starvation uh, and poverty. Mm-hmm. And so, you're, is this what I'm, and so, uh, it, it's, it's so, uh, the problem is, it has actually, it's just probably split society more than anything else. And as you yeah. saw your video the other day, that's what they want. Because the more we're split, you know, black versus white, left versus right, rich versus yeah. poor, vax versus anti vax then they can control us, divide and conquer, right? Rather yeah. than us being together. For sure. But and but that's the exact thing. It's, this is the genius in their propaganda marketing is the stay at home and save lives or whatever. Stay at home is the exact opposite of community and community is the only thing that's going to stand between us and this tyrannical regime. And it's the reason why somebody will be pulled off, a, an old woman will be pulled off a chair or someone will be arrested for feeding homeless which is community, but there's not enough community to stand by and watch, what, one or two officers harass somebody? Like, how many people... People stand around and don't do anything, or they're locked in their house and don't do anything, but if people were just... I'm not saying be violent and bash police officers or anything like that, but, I mean, you can stop them in a number of different ways. You don't have to be violent about it. You just have to get enough people to stand between them. So this isn't happening. This is not happening in our community. This is not something that community does, and you are not acting in your supposed role of serving and protecting the community right now. This is not happening where where you can either take the role of a Commonwealth public official, which is somebody who is standing in there to actually protect 
the you know the community and the rights of people and or standing against tyranny or oppression or anything like that or it's just look this is a citizen arrest on you you're actually going against um you know what a community stands for right now we're not letting it happen if you continue to do this we're going to arrest you you don't have to like you know tackle them and elbow them in the head while they're on the ground you know you don't have to do that but at the same time, I've seen that happen in other countries, and it works a treat. <laughs> you know, well, cops yeah. trying to grab people, and then a whole bunch of people pulling those people away from the cops and standing in between them and not letting them back near them. And then the cops just give up. And, yeah. yeah. I mean, it has to, they, they split. This is, this is the, one, I mean, the whole agenda, right, isn't it? Like, get rid of anyone who would do that. And he's, and he's only alpha male. It's the whole make the masculine, um, masculinization agenda. Everything, like breaking the, like break out the family unit. That's what they've done. Um, but there are more people becoming awake to it. But it's just knowing all these things that, that luckily, as I before, we had some powerful connections that's been built with this. But we are sort of at the sort of tipping point. Where, where do you see it going, Tom? Depends. It's all up to us. It's not up to them. Like they've got their thing. Oh, we want this and we want that, but it's not up to them. It's just uh, how many people are too stupid to not do anything about it and how many people are switched on enough to want to do. I, To be honest, I think it's um, – it depends. Okay, this is what I think. If it keeps going the way it's going, I see a divide. I see the split. I see the people who are going to want to just live and take responsibility for themselves, getting more off-grid, doing things more on their own, that kind of thing, or moving to somewhere that's more appropriate. If you're in a city, you're kind of screwed, really, I think. So, but the other way that it could go is that they push too hard. And if they push too hard, that will make even the dopey ones say no. So it's kind of how how is it going to go? Are they going to make that mistake of pushing too hard? Because I say this a lot. I say that I really don't have enough faith in humanity as it is. I think people are too asleep, too lazy, too apathetic. I really think so. Unless something happens that that wakes people up like you know even if a terrorist attack is staged it's still the event that happens or a tsunami rolls through or something and then all of a sudden you see you see the human spirit in action and there's nothing that can overcome it the human spirit can overcome anything and when people band together as they do like people in new york and things like that normally they're punching each other in the head and swearing at each other and whatever and then um and then when something happens, they actually band together. Hey, let's rebuild this. Let's work with each other, that sort of thing. And you can't overcome that. So to me, it's either it's either people split because I don't think there's enough impetus to stoke that human spirit to unite yet. Uh, and we'll see that kind of divide. Or they will make, because I think they've made so many mistakes already. Like you and I think it's hilarious, right? It's like you watch this as a as like a script. It's a comedy script. It's like, how is this the dumbest thing ever? And it's so funny. It's like Dumb and Dumber 7 or something like that. But that not not the majority of people. And so the majority of people are kind of going along with it. And then you just go, well, all right, well, this is going to split people. The people who know that's a comedy show are going to create their own societies. And those that want their vaccines and smart chips and, and surveillance and and social credits and all that sort of stuff and self-driving cars and 5G, they're all going to save climate change and live in their cities. And then um, we're going to live in nature and do it the right way. And, but if they do continue to uh, like up the comedy, then they could very well, that could be their demise because then there's just too many people who go, no, nah, human spirit's coming to the fore here and we're going to, uh, we're going to actually band together and this isn't going to happen. So uh, not that I'm a fortune teller, but to me, those are the two ways that I see it going. <laughs> yeah, what I mean- about you? What do you reckon? I don't see them, I've seen them pushing, I don't see them, I've seen them wanting it, I don't think they're, it's almost like in the film where they, the, the, the bad guys almost win and then Phoenix from the Ashes, we, we, we come, I think they made, they made so many mistakes so far, I mean, they, and there's a few of them have woken. Someone put up yesterday, someone put up on the Twitter the other day, some, yesterday's conspiracy theories are today's life, live events, and I hate saying that, and I was like, even you, who just yeah. thought it was all nonsense is now waking yeah. up to this fucking bullshit. Yeah, yeah. When and they don't want to, they want to lock you down until 2000 and whatever it is, and what, even though you're getting the vaccine, you still have to wear a mask. You can still <laughs> spread it, and you still might get coronavirus. It's like what? And like why would mask, I then? Yeah, masks you don't need masks. They, they don't work. To yeah, you do need masks. No, you need two. No, you need three. Um, what was it? Well, some of, so many things like. I called my boss into work um, saying I'm sick. Oh, sorry to hear that, mate. What's your symptoms? I don't have any. What? 
it's like, what are you on about? Is it like healthy people causing ill? It's just like, you know, when you go down the other rabbit holes or the rabbit holes, it's the truth. Like Andres Wonderplant talking about viruses and what we talked about before, how they clean up the body, they clean up the crew. And that's what they're there for. Um, which actually, we'll tap on that a, a, little, a little bit into that. But it's funny like how the guy who talks about the PCR, and they even come out on the Who I put it up, it got 10.5 thousand retweets about how they even changed and said that the PCR tests are are useless. Oh, they changed the speed of it. Now the vaccine's out. So, oh, the cases are coming down. Now the vaccine's out. Shock. Now, they, they wouldn't do that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's just there's so much that they're doing which is complete and utter nonsense. And as you said before, you can just look. At, so the other thing, like it's just backwards. You look at the health ministers who, you know, they look like death. Everything they do, none of it makes sense. It's just job for the boys. So, you know, I think, yeah, it might take a little while before people everyone wakes up, but 100% people are going to point that direction. Move. You know, into my only thing is a travel thing because the Laura's K was starting up freedomairways.com. She said, because she yeah. said, like, so that's good because all the planes that are still on the ground, you know, they're losing tens of th- hundreds of thousands a week. Um, and it's like, and they people could be like, well, I want to want to fly. And this is one of the reasons we've invested in, in certain things because we know they might be going to the moon. And if they go to the moon, I mean, you know, you talked about before how you don't like the banking system or debt because you understand where it comes from. But I come from the point of these fuckers are going to have so much money anyway. We need some of us to have money so we can do other things and we can put things in place. Because if we don't have any money and they have it all, then we're fucked. Because end of the day, they do control the banking system and they're not going to let it go easily. We haven't got a, we haven't got a government. We've got a corporate headquarters, right? And it's run by big pharma, you know, big agra. It's run by now big tech, who are five times more powerful than big pharma. You know, this is why people say, oh, tinfoil hat, conspiracy theories, but electromagnetic frequencies. It's like, cool, mate. You think they're good? You think 5G is good? Go and get a fucking pylon, stick it in your bedroom, yeah, and see how, see how you get on. You know, because yeah. I reckon in about a week's time, you won't be feeling too great, you know. Yeah. And this is what, and so, like, money where your mouth is again. And so I see it, uh, communities being built. Um, I said to my friend the other day, like, I was, I always had connections with people and, the natural health world and I would speak to like yourself we haven't met yet but we will and um, I was still doing my thing I was around my friends and life was good but the people in my world were all over the place whereas this has like forced me into with a community of people that I've always wanted to meet that we were they're here together yeah. Um, yeah. forced me to I've got a, I've gone and lived somewhere else like by this ocean which is great um, you know, and investing in certain things, it's just moved things quicker. And so, for all the negative things, it has got a lot of positive things. I wouldn't be talking to you. You know, I wouldn't have met, I wouldn't have met Nick. I wouldn't have got, I've had some great clients this year. Some of like musicians very awake that have, and got a lot of connections that wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for this. So, mm. yeah, I see it dividing, and it'd be interesting to see where we're in five years. I said, like you, I have a big split or. It will become back together. But every 10 years, they like to do something like this, right? Unfortunately, so many people, Tom, there's people that are awake. You know, it's the thing. Some people see. Some people see when they're shown. Some people will never see. Mm. And we've obviously, it's part of our journey to go through what we went through so we can help other people, you know. And when we see, there's us. And then there's other people that see that we... um, see the other side uh, and and but to just dismiss it as like crazy but then there's some people out there the majority of the people in the world i think who don't even know about natural health who don't even know about organic food because they're just used to getting up watching the tv eating cereal maybe living off benefits or going to like rubbish job and coming home watching the tv so they don't even know natural the natural health world or alternative you know um life exists so yeah. that's the problem I and mean, there's so many of them but where will they be? I mean, have you seen the Deagle reports, right? How they want to, how they want to drastically reduce populations in the next five years? Have you seen that? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And so that's the thing, right? It's like that. I mean, I think it was almost a third in in the UK, and there was lots yeah. in America. Um, yeah. I don't know what it was like in Australia. What was it in Australia? Was it quite a big? big uh, it was twenty five million down to like ten or fifteen million. That's a lot, right? Yeah. Uh, and so, and it, and it's like people think how are they doing this? It's like, well, they're doing it through the water, through the vaccines, through the food, through everything. Uh, and then one of the, that's a really interesting interview the other day. I don't want to, I might send it to you. It was about, you know, more, do you know more Jellens? Yeah. Yeah. More Jellens. Um, and what that actually is. 
and when people are actually starting to bring fibres out of their mouth or out of their skin, when they actually put it under a microscope, these fibres are alive. Have you heard about this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And one yeah. of the things the guy was saying, that that's how they're, what they're doing, they're putting certain things in these things, and when they go into the digestive system, they come alive, and they're actually nanotechnology. And so they're trying to make a synthetic, uh, sorry, they're trying to make a synthetic version of you, but like an artificial version of you, so then we can move into um, an artificial world, a bit like the Matrix. And like yeah. when Elon Musk was asked, how, how, what do you think of the likelihood it is that we actually are living in a simulation? He said, I think it's billions to one that we're not already. Mm. Which is quite interesting, right? But when you see mm. about this technology and what they're doing, it's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, and this is why it's so important to live naturally and um, yeah. do all the things you can with health. But, yeah. you know, it's when it comes to that, and you don't even know, because when you look at some of the things they're doing or the technology they've got, have you seen the technology that they can change someone's face? Have you seen that? No. Nah. Oh, mate, I'll send you it. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like a guy is standing on stage and he's speaking and then all of a sudden they change his face, his hairline, his hair colour, everything. You wouldn't even know. And it's like, that's scary, right? And things that they could do back in the day in terms of manipulating influencing soldiers and like super soldiers and stuff. So you never know what's going on and how far. They only, they, they only brought out the other day like a, a robotic gecko. That's, you know, because they're artificial, because that's what you need, artificial lizards. Um, <laughs> but, so imagine what they've actually got. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they don't show you exactly what they got. I think oh, it's almost like they've prepared everybody through movies for all the stuff, like, you know, the zombie apocalypse. Like, that's just probably all these, all these like, half-cyborg things that are all in underground. You know, didn't you send me a video? I was like, they were in some thing filming all these dead bodies hung up, and they're, like, rooms was, full of... So that was, yeah, organ harvesting. Yeah, organ harvesting, clones, all this sort of stuff that people think is just folklore or fantasy. It's like they're saving that for something. They're saving that for uh, when they if, – if the vaccine and the uh, the water and the food and their thoughts and all that don't get rid of enough people, I think they've got like just send in, send in the bees, send in the, send in the hounds that will bark and shoot bees at people and all that sort of stuff. I think they're going to do the uh, – that sort of stuff. But I also think that that's not, I'm not worried about that personally at all. Anyway, even if they did that, I think there's a certain level of, um, you've got to, you've got to interact with that for it to have any, any kind of effect, I think. So yeah, it's just, I don't know, to me, it's all just interesting. I think, uh, I think we are heading for a depopulation and, but it's like people are going to depopulate themselves quite effectively. It's, uh, yeah, it's just how it is. <laughs> So that's what they're doing. That's what they're doing already. With, with like Bill Gates buying up all that farmland, right? And they were saying he's buying up the farmland because he actually wants, well, he wants to control the food, but he actually also wants the water. Um, Paul Chuck was talking about this the other day. He said one of his clients who's super rich has been sending her uh, attorneys to look into where Nestle are trying to acquire land. And every time they look into something, she buys it so people can keep their land. And I was like, we need more fucking people like that. Yeah, definitely. Um, and yeah. so that's important. And this is why, Tom, as much as you despise it, we need to have some money as well because otherwise, you know, we need to be able to, we need to, because otherwise they just control the food and the water. And then it's like, even the springs, you know, what they're doing in natural springs. And, and the amount of people that don't believe this stuff, I just say to them, go and watch the film Erin Bokovic. Go and see what they were doing there. Like, yeah. um, have you seen, you probably, you might not have seen it because it's, Documentaries are only one thing I do do watch when it comes to this. Things like there's a film out called Sacred Cow now. There's the other one. Um, have you watched Dark Water? Dark Waters. No. It's about Dupont and about the Teflon pans. Oh yeah. And, and what, what it's causing. And this is why I think you did one the other day, a uh, video the other day about detoxification and um, or maybe about the lymph system. And this is why people need to understand why it's so important for them to to as they're going through this to make sure they're living healthy, right? Because yeah gives the best advantage of being able to, um, to, to to actually see what's going on. Otherwise, people are so yeah. toxic in their, in their thoughts and body that they, they can't ever see the truth. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I do agree, though. I think if people have – see, that's the thing is if you can use money to acquire land like that to protect it, then I'm all for that, obviously. But at the same time, like if Bill – what's his name? Bill Gates, if he was over here – and like a bunch of people bought up land, we just go like, well, we're going to take that now. 
and we just go and take it <laughs> often. <laughs> like this is like you were, people keep talking about it. It's like what is with the weakness of society? People just go, oh look, Nestle just bought all those farms. Oh, that's a shame. It's like fucking take it back. Like they're they're dweebs. They're just they're not the sort of people that if people are just conditioned into this thing. Oh, they're rich and powerful. It's like no, they're just weak humans. Just go and take it. Just go and take the land. Like, take it off them. This is where I feel like why people need to have big communities. This is why down the line I think, because there's not enough people like me and you in those areas. So there's me and, and I mean, I mean like my area and there's you there. There might be more people like that where you are. But, you know, I, 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 where I live in England, probably, there might be about, I don't know, it's, it's a densely populated area. There's not that many people. So you'll just be like what they call like the, the lunatic nutcase, you know, the local nutcase. Whereas what you're, I know what you're saying, it's like anywhere. It's like when back in the day, if if Persia came into Greece, they didn't just go, oh yeah, here's a here's our kingdom. They're like, mm. take it, you know, or, or like you're going to try and fuck our, our our land, our water supply, have our women, you know, take it. And that's what, but unfortunately, society's been so dumbed down and so weakened. From mm. look at that, Tom, they don't they don't. Educate themselves, you know. They they watch fucking what's it like um, reality TV and eat yeah. um, junk food, and all they care about is they just want to be left alone, you know. Rather than thinking like I was saying to people, we've almost been given this like, illusion that we're in this part of history where nothing can go wrong and you're safe. It's like it was a hundred years ago, people going over the top younger than me, you know, running into death because of world wars uh, and it's happening all throughout history but we just have this like, comfortable cosy life and no one wants to step out and that's what they've done so they can take over everyone so that's why yeah. I feel like building communities of people or people like us all living in the same area would be very powerful because yeah. if they try to do anything you'd be like no not today thanks mm. so rather than having like one over here and one over there and one over here or maybe having sort of different areas around the world where you built, built those communities so people did yeah. come to you and you'd be like no thanks not today mate so, you know, it seems like Byron's pretty good for that. Could be a good place to uh, get it, but yeah. it's just getting on planes at the moment. So there were ways yeah. around it. But um, yeah. it managed to, like, shut off. Do, you, do people have to, I think they have to quarantine in Australia, right? I think so, if you're flying internationally, yeah. Mm. Yeah. And there's talking about how you can get, can get. Um, I mean, I think I heard Nick talking about this, about how he would use the... Uh, the man woman thing rather than the citizens and, and persons thing and they try to quarantine you but um, I think Dolores Kay was talking about this actually in that video I sent you how she the thing is most people as soon as they see police they shit their pants mm-hmm. and so it's been able to stand your ground uh, and, yeah. she, and she said that she has never signed the form right did you read yeah. did you see that yeah I didn't get all the way through that one yeah she said that she never signed the form to come into the country but it's it's quite interesting. You've not done any international travel, have you? Not recently, no. No, it'd be interesting to see how you could how you could maybe get through that. Um, yeah. And even with even with the even with the vaccination thing, what would do you reckon would be the uh, the way to go to stand in common law with that, or do you think it would be to to get some documentation? Oh, either it depends. It's a, there's always it's always the it's always where it's coming from, not whether it's words or documentation or whatever. I mean, realistically, if it was the average person who isn't able to do this sort of stuff, just holding their position with words in themselves, then I would recommend getting, you know, the, uh, uh, what do you call it? When you get a exemption, get an exemption from vaccines. Um, that's, I think that's the easiest thing to do. I think that for the average person or getting some kind of documentation in place that you can use and give you, yeah, so that's just like the, the tool. I think some people are just going to need tools and I think those are the things that they'll need. Uh, if you're a bit more advanced than that, you can just definitely hold your position with the words and hold, hold people to task, anybody that gets in your way, with uh, noticing them for grounds of liability for uh, anything that might go against their code of conduct, any laws that they're breaking, because remember, none of these things are laws anyway, and if they are breaking actual laws, they're the ones that are liable. So it's learning how to not even to know the laws, but to hold them accountable for anything that they might do or say that does go against law or codes of conduct. And then 
that's pretty much it. That's that's where it's going to go. Then after that, it's literally just having strength in numbers. So you got a plane full of people, and they just go, no, no one's doing any of this. We're all walking through here. See you later. You know, there's that there's that kind of thing as well. Having people on the ground waiting. You know, imagine five thousand people or fifty thousand people surrounding an airport terminal. <laughs> The, the customs aren't going to be stopping people in. They'll be, all right, everyone through. So, yeah, I don't want to get lynch mobbed. I'm only getting paid like $18 an hour. It's not worth it, you know. So we've got to consider these things. There's just there's a lot of different ways it can go. I like this idea of freedom airlines. And, um, yeah, I think if people have the ability to invest in that, they should most definitely support that because that's the thing that's going to be – that's going to happen. Uh, there's not I, – I think most airlines aren't going to have – the vaccine passport thing because they know they're going to lose too much money. I think they're trying to make it look like one or two are doing it, but um, I also think that they're getting paid to do that. Uh, yeah, I think we'll have to see how it plays out. You know, I'm just kind of like not even that concerned about international travel myself at the moment. Like I've already got it good here. I don't really have the inclination to need to go anywhere. Uh, and then there's other options. There's boat. There's There's other options as well. So, Kind of I think they they probably have the same thing. I think boat and stuff, right? Maybe because if you're going, no, there, there's the board, different kinds though. There, there's your slow boats. There's different ways to do it. There's always ways. That's the thing. If you if you really wanted to, like, let's say I had like loved ones trapped in another country or something, I'd do whatever it took to get there. I'd take six boats. I'd take a fishing boat from the top end of Australia to like Papua New Guinea, then one to Indonesia. Then I'd like trek through Indonesia, and I'd get another boat from like you know, somewhere near the edge of Asia over to, you know, Hawaii or something and then get into like there's just there's different ways to, to do things and if you've got a will you'll you'll do it. I think one of the problems is like we've been talking about, people aren't resilient enough anymore. They just go, Oh, I can't get on a direct flight from LA to Sydney, so oh I can't fly I can't leave the country. But it's like how many other ways that would be just a little bit harder but you're not willing to look at because you're actually lazy. So we, I think we're too trapped by the convenience and oh, I can just book a plane and just get out of the country. It's like that's a relatively new thing. That's not how we used to do things. So realistically, I think there's that, there's that line as well, like how lazy are people being? And that's the, that's the block. It's not the offer of a vaccine or you can't fly because there's other ways to travel. And there's there's harder ways, but there's ways. So uh, I think that's a big element is how much people are willing to you know, or not willing to dig deeper into themselves first and foremost and then to also dig deeper into other alternative ways to get around. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I was talking about this before, but I think uh, with my friend, I was like, at the end of the day, you can get away. I think it's people just, they're worried about turning up to the airport and being turned away and having spent £6,000 because they haven't got a vaccine. But I said, look, at the end of the day, you need to, you need to, this is where I'm lucky because I'm just me. I haven't got a wife or kids. Um, even if, no, but to be fair, if I had them, I'd just be like, no, we're doing this. It doesn't matter. That's because of course who I am. It's like mm-hmm. when people say, no, I booked a flight to come out here. People are like, oh, are you sure you can go? They're going to ask you. I was like, I'm going. And I went, I went but the flight didn't even ask me anything. I didn't wear a mask on the plane because I, I had my thing. I was like, I'm not wearing one. Bernie, thank you very much. Um, yeah. And it's just like, but that's who I am. Because a lot of people yeah. aren't like that. And if I was coming out here, whether they liked it or not. Um, and that's and, and I've seen that Brazil is open. We're going to go and see Brazil. We're going to go down to other part of Mexico. We're going to go to Colombia. But I like I want to travel because I want to want to see the world. But two is other things are I want to research for natural health, certain herbs, medicines, etc. I also want to come and see people like yourself. See what's like on Byron Bay. See if maybe you know I want to stay here for a little while and have different mm-hmm. bases. Um, so the Freedom Airways is definitely something um, you want to do. And then there's other things like if you can make enough of you can get a private plane and things like that. But you know I always yeah. say to people. I'd like to, to see what, what you think, but I'm I'm with you. Like, if enough of us stand up and hold our ground to this, it, there's nothing they they can they can really do to it. Um, yeah. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about, actually, Tom, this is a bit, bit different, take a different direction. Okay, was just about. Well, it comes from um, what I've seen your videos around looking into some of the things around um, the, the raw foods you eat and stuff like that. I just wanted to see just the people out there a day in the life of Tom Bonnet's uh, food habits. Remember when you spoke with it was me, you and Amy on, you were saying. We're trying to eat more at the moment because we're trying to get omnipotent and um, trying to be all powerful. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, yeah. You're fucking Wally. Um, <laughs> uh, 
funny, you cracked me up. I was like, you're like, I'm eating more. I was like, why? He's like, because I want to be omnipotent. I was like, all right, cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think you were doing more weight training at the time. I can't remember. It was a little while ago. Um, yeah, I was putting on weight, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How'd that go? Yeah, good. I got up to 85 kilos, and now I'm 76 again. Um, yeah, lean cool. weight's around 72. So it's uh, I was doing that because as you – get through like some heavy detoxification. There's only so far the body will allow. You have to have extra body weight before the body can A, let go of the toxicity and B, handle it. So um, that's why like really skinny, wiry people, they'll never really get rid of deep seated toxicity. And they're all, if you think of like people that are always like jittery and a bit like, you know, um, frazzled and that, they're always the wiry people. The, the people that have got a, a bit more weight on them generally are a lot calmer and things like that. Like it has a lot of different physiological effects on the body. So mine was specifically with related to detoxifying. I was putting extra weight on so that my body could have a bit more of a rest and then allow some of the fat to do its role, which is protecting the body from toxicity. And then also as you lose that weight again, then with it goes some of that more embedded stuff that it was, that it was protecting the body from. Because fat's the only thing that can't be hurt. Like every other tissue can be damaged by the toxicity, particularly uh, toxic metallic minerals. But fat can't. Fat's not harmed by it at all. So question, why would you have to get bigger to do that? Why is being putting on weight um, good for it? Is it just because, as you said, like the fat can't get hurt by the toxins and therefore it, it, it will take it out? Yeah, and also as you gain more weight, the body starts to relax more as well, especially if you've been at a certain weight for a long period of time. The body learns that that's like its baseline and that's where it's comfortable. So then that comfortability is like doesn't matter how much weight it is, that's where the body's comfortable and it won't let more go than it's comfortable. So then if you add to that body weight, then the body starts to go, okay, now we've got surplus. Like we've got a surplus of ability or a surplus of protection so then it can go letting more go of, from the toxicity. Okay. So you went up to – I didn't think you ever – I didn't think you looked much bigger. 72 to 85, 13 kgs, it's quite a lot. So yeah. um, you didn't look big or fatter to me at all. You, you yeah, no, think, I definitely did. Yeah. I, I, definitely I can't. Yeah. I, don't, I, I can't remember you thinking, oh, Tom looks fat. I don't remember, I remember that. Um, yeah, well – there's a couple of, I mean, I, I definitely did get bigger in like size. Like I definitely got bigger. Like even some people would comment on it. They go, oh, geez, are you putting on weight? And I'm like, yep, sure am. But also it's different. Like when you eat raw fats, cause all the fats that I'm eating are raw, the, the molecular size is a lot smaller than, than cooked fat and what it will actually end up in is it end up as in the body. So somebody that's got, that's eating all raw fat, they won't look as fat as somebody that's eating cooked fats, which are a lot bigger in molecular size. So that's another kind of, that's another element to it as well. Okay. So like what would, so for example, what would a normal day, just lean at 72, you're at 76 now, so you're just going back down, right, into 72. Um, yeah. So what would a day look like now? And what would, what would a day look like to get you to 85? Uh, so well, go, so the 85, I would start the day with, Usually I start the day with a green juice or a, or a clay drink. So reason for that is to bring the body back to a state of alkalinity after getting quite acidic overnight, which most bodies do, uh, and also to absorb some toxins because the body will usually dump toxins to the stomach first thing in the morning as well, so it's a good idea to have something. So a clay drink will absorb that or a, a green juice that'll alkalinize with some, um, a bit like a teaspoon of cream or something. The fat helps to arrest some of the toxins and move it through. And then after that, then I'll go into, so when I'm gaining weight, I'll eat a lot more meat. So I'll have a meat meal with uh, a lot of fat like butter, eggs. So what I would normally do is I'll have uh, like a, you know, I don't know how much, just <laughs> a handful size. If I grab a big chunk of like chopped up meat, whether it's fish, chicken, red meat, whatever, I'll have that and then I'll have a butter smoothie with it. So that's like three or four tablespoons of butter that's melted down. I'll have three eggs in that, a tablespoon of honey and a squeeze of lemon, like a whole lemon juice and put into that. So I'll have those together. Then mid morning, I'll have another smoothie or three eggs by themselves. Lunch will be pretty much lunch, breakfast, lunch and dinner will be more or less the same, just variations on it, like variations of the type of meat or like spices or herbs or whatever had with it. 
Uh, and then a lot of like smoothies of cream, eggs, honey, and either cinnamon or lemon juice or something like that. You should have that a few um, times a day. So how many, yeah, how many, yeah. how many smoothies probably, do you have a day? Probably four or five yeah. or six. Four. Yeah, or <laughs> six. They're yeah, tasty. Because, they're very tasty. Yeah, they're really tasty and they're really, it's like you never feel like, oh, geez, I've overeaten today. I feel gross. You never feel like that. You feel like a good, good energy and stuff from it. So when I say six, that's because I have a smoothie with breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then I'll probably have a smoothie mid-morning, mid-afternoon, and before bed. So that's six smoothies. So that's like I I go a kilo a kilogram of butter would last four days basically for me. I would go okay. through two tubs every like just ten days. I'd go through two tubs of butter. Right. Okay. And so, and so that was when you're building up to eighty five kgs. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then and like a dozen and a half eggs a day as well, probably like somewhere around 16 eggs a day, as well as meat. Um, and having um, them raw. So, pardon? Having those eggs all raw, yeah? Yeah, everything's raw with that, yeah. Occasionally so I'd all have... Your, all your meat's raw. Yeah, all the meats are raw as well. Occasionally I'd have a cooked meal, like uh, some lentils and like uh, rice and dal, or I'd have like a cooked sweet potato, something like that, but it's kind of rare. Uh, yeah, it's a bit, bit rare to have that. Okay, I've got a couple of questions around that just for you uh, in a minute. And then getting down to your old weight, um, mm-hmm. well, we'll get going to the toxins. I'm going to, I'm going to go into that as well for you. But just as people out there going out to back into it, because I don't, my day in the life is a little bit different, but based on similar stuff. Um, so, um, and you didn't mention any vegetables there, really, any, any raw vegetables, anything like that. No, no, I don't eat raw vegetables because they are pulling on the digestive tract too much. So I have them in a juice form because they don't get a chance to uh, alkalinize the digestive tract too much. They they absorbed and digested too quickly in the stomach. And so, uh, yeah, so as I'm now, as I'm like dropping weight, it's basically the same diet, just, just less taking quantities. out, just less quantities, yeah. Okay. Just less quantities, but also more vegetables and some fruits as well. So like uh, still a vegetable juice at the start of the day. Um, then I might have another one during the day, like mid-afternoon, do another vegetable juice, or I might just have like a salad snack, like some grated, I might do like grated uh, carrot with some uh, cherry tomatoes that I get off the vine that I have here, a little bit of herbs, some apple cider vinegar, uh, some olive oil, um, and yeah, and then just like eat that as a salad, for example. Uh, I didn't mention avocado before. I do eat plenty of avocado as well, and so that's like, you know, a, a Where would you... Where would you put that in if you're having all the smoothies? Where would you put that in? So uh, you, I actually put that in smoothies sometimes. Uh, avocado actually blends quite well in smoothies. It makes it real thick like a mousse, but if you've got more lemon juice and eggs in, it's still like enough of a liquid to drink. Or I have the avocado mashed up with like meat and things for the meat meal. Uh, or I put that in with a salad. Like if I do a carrot and tomato and stuff salad, I put avocado in with that. Okay, interesting. Okay, and so and so you just have and so you just have a little bit less as you come as you come down. Yeah, okay. quite a bit less, like just to hunger. Like that, when I'm eating a lot, I'm actually like making myself eat more than I actually need or want. So when I'm eating now, like uh, I'm eating a lot less meat. Like maybe one and and definitely like I haven't eaten red meat for a while, except for high meat that I have in the fridge. Like I usually do high yes. meat. I make red meat. <laughs> <laughs> high meat. <laughs> For those of you out there don't know what high meat is, uh, it seems like century eggs as well, actually. Yeah. Um, if you don't know what high meat and century eggs, this is why I love talking to Tom because he's, he's, a, he's a complete nutcase like me. He knows about this stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, high meat is like meat you'd leave can be up to it can be a long time just to just to basically biodegrade and, and digest itself yeah. the bacteria and um something they used to use in ancient traditions and uh, people leave it for a year how long have you, how long have you left yours for yeah mine's mine currently it's about six months old the meat all right and how does it taste uh not the best but it's um it's it tastes <laughs> it tastes weirdly uh good actually it's like the initial, like the smell. So it's the smell that, you know, our taste is basically through smell. If you don't smell, you don't taste. So, uh, the, it, it's weird. It doesn't smell like it's rotten. It doesn't smell off. It just smells really, really strong. And then when you eat it, it's got a lot of like strong. It tastes strong. It's like when people first have something like blue cheese, they're like, they're not like, oh, that's delicious. It's like, well, that's really strong. And like, it smells kind of like, oh, that smells like someone's foot that's had, like, 
spent too long in the trenches in socks and shit. It's like, you know, it's not pleasant, but there's something about it that is appealing because it's the amount of bacteria that the body's kind of like, it's good. So when you eat it, generally what I do though is I drink, I, when I chop it up to begin with, I only chop it into a size that I can put in my mouth. So I'm not getting meat out and chopping it because it's like, it's just going to hang around on the smell. So I just put it in my mouth and it's small enough. I can just give it a couple of chews and then swallow it pretty much whole. Like meat, you don't really need to chew because it doesn't digest in the stomach really anyway. It just starts getting broken down. It starts digesting further in the digestive tract. And then also because it's when it's high, it's already pre-digested anyway. Um, a lot of cultures like Inuits and things, they swallow chunks of meat and fat whole. They have really strong throats that are used to just like pretty much crushing food. And so it's really carbohydrate. We have to chew really well because it starts digesting in the mouth. But meat, we don't. So... um it just stops you having to sit there and chew it for ages, getting all the taste. So you, I pretty much just swallow it. And to make that easier, I'll swallow it with some raw milk or some buttermilk or something that's just, you know, wash it down basically and swallow it almost like it's a supplement, like it's a pill. It's interesting because meat in general it takes longer to digest, obviously. People that I know have got gut issues, it's not great. I mean, it can be very hard for them. It's the other thing. Yeah. I want, two things I wanted to talk to you about, actually. One was... Um, well, we, we get on to a seven there and need curd oil for raw foods in a minute. But, but, um, thing I would say is, right, with, do you, do you ever get no pains in the gut from having raw foods, having lots of fats digested, ne- never have any yeah, issues with that at all? Not, yeah. not a problem. Okay. Yeah. Parasites though, from eating raw meat, raw fish. Ever? No, they're, um, no, they're, that's like a myth there. Well, first of all, it's a bit of a myth that that'll happen. Second of all, uh, there are people who will literally look, try to find meat that has parasites in it because the parasites will help them with... There's a lot of different therapies where people are actually given parasites and given trichinosis worms and things like that because they'll actually break down some of the shit that's in their body that the body's unable to do. So they, they use them as health aids. I think the whole... um yeah, there's a, we could talk about that is like, there's a lot in, ins and outs to that, but there's, it's never a problem when the meat is healthy. It's when the meat is toxic and poor quality. So if you've got like commercially raised pigs or something that are literally eating garbage and they're not how, they don't have healthy tissue, those unhealthy tissues in order to facilitate the breaking down and removal of the toxic waste, they need parasites, they need more fungus, more bacteria. They need to be infected with this to help break it down. Otherwise, what happens is the body's inability to break down and remove old and dying cells, even in a healthy body, we're still always replacing cells, then the body has its response to that is tumors. That's what a tumor is. It'll surround toxic mass that can't be broken down so that it doesn't affect the rest of the body. And that's your tumor, that's cancers, that's things like that. So the the uh, things like worms and parasites and fungus and bacteria are the precursor to that to stop that happening. If they can't do their job well enough, you'll still get tumors, cancers, and the like. So only ones you've got to worry about is if you're having toxic meat. If you're having healthy meat, then no need to worry about parasites, etc. No, no, it's it's like it's like it's. And even if there was any, it's only going to be beneficial. But a healthy tissue doesn't need parasites, fungus, and bacteria to uh, to be breaking it down because it's healthy. That's the that's the whole point. So mm-hmm. this is the thing: is like we don't have anything that invades the body. We only actually have things that'll help the body. If we have fungus, parasite, and, and bacterial infections, it's because the body is not functioning. The body is not breaking down or removing old cells or it has too much toxic waste in it from bad diet, lifestyle, and whatever else. Mm-hmm. And so we need these things in there to break down. They're like, they're like a teacher. They're like, look, dude, you're, you're living like an idiot. Like you've, you're not really functioning well at all. We're here to do you a favor and break stuff down. And so when the body is healthier, we don't have an excess of any of these things, but we always have them. If we didn't have parasites, fungus, and bacteria, we wouldn't function at all. So yeah. they all have a symbiotic effect. Yeah, so, well, as Paul Check talks about, you know, the Mother Nature's decomposers, and they yeah. come to, and if you don't listen, they will, 
you know, put you back in the ground because they're like, you're not actually doing much for us here. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're actually more, you're actually better off in the ground. So that's what I was telling people. They all work in conjunction with us. The problem is lots of people have a bacterial, so bacterial or parasite or fungal infection because their body is so toxic and therefore these things think, oh, well, we've got something that we can take over. Oh, this guy needs extra help getting rid of toxins, and that's what they do. This is why getting rid of parasites um, or trying to get rid of heavy metals, when the parasites are there for a reason, it's to protect you from the heavy metals, and there's certain things around that, that we can go into. Um, and also, but you have you have quite a lot of similar foods there, Tom. So you do not rotate your foods, because we've heard about if you have too much of the same food, you can get food sensitivities, um, no, not really, because no, I, it's, um, so I experimented a lot with that, especially with Paul's genetic food type rotation diets. And, um, I've, yeah, it's, it's, they have more of a role when somebody has something like a, um, autoimmune condition or they're bordering on yeah. getting something that's autoimmune. That's when that has more of a, more yeah. of a, an effect. But when, when the foods are natural and especially when they're raw, I've never seen anybody get an intolerance to a food because they eat the similar foods. I mean, I eat a, a wide variety of food, but the staples are usually the same. And if you think about if you're in the wild, like if you're, if, if nature wanted to give you food intolerances, it wouldn't, you, we wouldn't get very far because if you're on the land in a particular area yeah. and the only thing you've got to hunt is like buffalo or something, yeah, yeah. Like buffalo, yeah. yeah same, as, same, same as animals, right? They're the same things. I, I, I'm a view on that. I do like to tell, I do like to get people to rotate foods just because, you know, they, you can, it's, sometimes it just gets people to break out of being bored. Also, yeah. research has showed like the, the more, the different foods you have, um, it, this helps produce different enzymes for the body to break it down. It can be it does, yeah. in, interesting. Um, but, um, I'm a view on that. I, I, I like to get my clients to do it though, to, to give them more variety because people get bored, but, yeah, you know, if you're having clean food, it all goes back to quality again. It's same with anything. Yeah. If you're getting high quality stuff, well, it's not going to react to it. If you keep on having, like, this is why people get like, so I don't know if you've heard of like a cross conversion reaction, Tom, where people like get reactions to certain foods that look similar on the genetic pathway, even though it's not the same food. They're like, well, I'm not reacting to that. Or people maybe react to milk, uh, and then they react to beef. Sorry, yeah, milk and then beef because it comes from the same animal. Um, yeah. the same, so, so it's interesting. Okay, my man, yeah. that's, that's good. But um, that's, that's the genetic type thing as well. It's like yeah. the same. I forget the word, for, there's a word for it, but, uh, but the thing is too, like, I will rotate meats as well. Like there's, for a while I can't get enough of red meat and then my body just goes, don't feel like it anymore. Yeah. And, but I feel more like fish or I just go actually more vegetarian for a while. Like most of the food is eggs and dairy and then occasionally some meat, you know, and, but not every day sort of thing. So it's like the body, the body knows what it's getting. And with the intolerances as well, a lot of the time it's with something that's not as readily digestible by most bodies like nuts seeds and a lot of plant matter it's like most of that's not that digestible so there's a lot more co uh, correlation between food sensitivities or building up something that is you know you're having it too often yeah it's plant paradox, those sorts right? of things. yeah this is why i i'm i'm with you i like to have some raw look, i do have some raw foods because um just yeah i just like to keep my body mixed but uh, a lot of my greens i, I tend to drink um yeah but I do like, for, my, for example, I mix things around and, uh, and so I wake up in the morning and I'll have water, like water with, with lemon, some milk thistle, um, generally, or some sort of liver support. Um, and then I'll, I'll have another glass of water and then I'll go about, I'll go to the gym, etc. And then once that's done, I give my body a little break generally, 12 hours at least and then 12, 16, depending on what day it is. And then I'll have some fruit, um, something like water based fruit just to keep the body digesting. Um, mm -hmm. And then, um, then I'll move on to lunch and then have a break and then I'll have dinner later on. Um, but sometimes, as I've, I've read in your book as well and I've done myself is sometimes my fruit, I'll have it just naturally. Other times I'll have it with a little bit of, of raw fat. Um, just because it, because it will, uh, it won't rub the, rub the blood of too much of, it, of its natural, um, minerals, etc. Um, have you found that yourself? Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's common for people to, and this is the other reason that having extra weight is important because when the body gets too cold, for example, it also robs the blood of fats. It needs to, it needs to get that. It, it's a, it's a thickening process of the blood, things like that, like either dumping water or robbing it of fats. So you never really, that's why you don't want to let the body get too cold, for example, because it'll do that. 
So, um, and fruits do the same thing, just, just naturally, because fruits generally will cool the body and things as well. So there's like a lot of reasons that you don't really just, unless you're in like a real tropical climate, that's why it's like more natural for somebody in Mexico, for example, to be eating more just tropical fruit without too much other stuff. But generally speaking, and this is a thing like everyone's on a continuum that the more somebody's lost their health, the more knife edge they'll be. Like they eat one piece of fruit by itself, blood fats drop, they're into like a, you know, they're down, they're right down. But somebody that's healthy that can maintain homeostasis well, it doesn't matter. Like they don't have to be that neurotic about how they eat. So as long as people are eating naturally, organically, and um, just to general, like, without eating dogmatically, they're going to be healthy. And it's almost like you can be real healthy, like totally normal, and then start getting really dogmatic about what you eat. I've got to eat all raw. I can't eat anything cooked or whatever. And then all of a sudden, the health starts declining because they're, like, they're missing some element of heat or coolness or some mineral or some vitamin or whatever. They're just missing stuff, and they're getting too in their head about it, and their health declines. Whereas they never needed to do anything like that. So with the whole fats thing with fruit, it's just the fact it, it's definitely true, but it's like it's more important when your health is low mm. because you're on more of a knife edge of like blood sugars, blood fats, like the smallest thing can throw you off and all of a sudden, you know, you're going downhill. So um, that's it's that's like, more where it is. 100%. I say this to people all the time and they got like diabetics and they talk about things. I say, well, I can't have carbohydrates. And I say, well, carbs are not, are not the devil. I said, well, it's the right, it's the wrong carbs at the wrong time compared to the right carbs at the right time. And also, when you ha- have like add fats to things, what do you think happens? It slows down the absorption. It mm-hmm. stops, as you said, rob- the body, robbing the body of fats and, and 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 blood sugars, because it's that combination. You, know, you put all of uh, a, a good quality like um, raw olive oil on something, or coconut oil, or or butter, it's going to slow down the absorption process. Of, and so yeah. this is where like combining of foods make a difference. And so, you know, this is where, um, yeah, most people, as you said before, it's individual as well. A lot of people don't need to go to these state, stages. It depends on how you want to live and what you want to do. Um, but you don't need to start going mad into things if you feel good, you know. Um, but it's... Um, it's interesting but it's to get people to just to look at things slightly differently because it's you know, most people wouldn't eat raw food because they're worried about getting salmonella and E. coli, right? Um, even though <laughs> they're like prevalent on basically every single surface in your house and your body. Um, and I think I've heard you say this before, Tom, and I've said it many times to, to people is it's not raw food or cooked food that's the problem. It's undercooked food or... Yeah rancid food that causes the issue right yeah yeah you undercook it that's the problem so it's the uh or and also when you do the whole cook then freeze then thaw then cook then like if you do that too many times you're also asking for trouble because uh the thing with raw food like so we have just this natural thing called smell and that tells you if something's off like you can smell something sometimes you go oh geez and you just like knocks your socks off but that's what so you think about raw meat uh, high meat though wouldn't you no, it's a different smell. That's the thing. It's a different thing. And you can t- just try it. Like, sm- smell the difference. And But even then... And I've tried it before raw, once, and I was like, mm. I didn't, I didn't, it didn't, it didn't go, didn't, it didn't smell like, yeah, I really want to, <laughs> it's not like when you walk past a bakery and you're like, oh, you know what, that smells phenomenal. Yeah, I know what yeah. you mean. It's a little bit, diff- it is different. It's a different thing. But it's also, even then, there's no raw food, there's no raw meat that I won't eat. Because what it'll be is if it's a sick meat, like with the, if it's sick tissue, you can smell that. It's not the fact that it's like got a lot of smell. It's the fact it'll smell different. Your, your nose can tell the difference. It's like, you know, like say if, if it's been a pig that's got no sunlight, eating trash, real unhealthy, that tissue is going to smell a particular way. Like, uh, like gangrenous or something. Like somebody that's got an infected wound and you smell their wound and you're just like, holy shit, it's like, get that away from me. That's not the smell of high meat or even partially decomposing meat. It's just a different smell. So, um, so yeah, the, the nose can tell you when bacterial levels are too high and it's different for two different people. So you see people in, um, third world countries which is like, I don't even like that term, but just like somewhere like Asia or even Mexico or something like that. And they have a lot of their fish and their meat just in open air at markets. 
And to them, it's all natural. It smells good. It's what, cause their, their gut isn't really that compromised. Whereas the Western gut, which is like overly sanitized, overly stressed, all that sort of stuff has barely any proper bacteria in it. So the smallest amount of a high bacterial food might be like, Oh, I've got the shits or whatever. And, but you'll smell that. Then they'll go, Oh, that's off. But somebody from Mexico or Asia might go, that's delicious. That smells great because our bacterial levels are different in our guts. So that's also a, uh, you know, it's not like one size fits all. It's like a continuum of how much bacteria will make somebody have a reaction. And somebody with good guts will handle like the sloppiest, slimiest piece of food that's like decomposed. They'll mm. handle it. Whereas somebody that's weak can't even smell that without throwing up. Yeah. So the nose tells you the bacterial levels, whether they're too high for your body. But once you cook that food, the bacteria levels can get somewhere between 50 and I think it's like 80 or so times higher Mm -hmm. before enough of a putrid odor will be released that you can smell that that's off. So what that means is that raw food can have, let's say it's got 10 grams of E. coli on it or salmonella. That's like not an actual figure, but let's say it's 10. So then a cooked version could have something like, a hundred grams of bacteria on it before it'll even give off an odor. So you weigh all of the cases of, you know, your food poisoning and that happens from cooked or undercooked or refried, unfrozen, all that sort of stuff. It doesn't come from an actual raw food. And, uh, yeah, that's about the simplest way I can put it. No, no, 100%. It's just so people like they need to, it also comes from the, the uh, medical industries, um, Fear-mongering. Fear-mongering and germ theory, which has been debunked time and time again, worrying about the germ, even though, yeah. you know, it's a germ, is nothing, the terrain is everything. And so, you know, and it's just because they want to be able to sell lots of antibiotics and, you yeah. know, and, and different medications and then antivirals with viruses, you know, which is ridiculous. We talk about how viruses, you know, we've been talk, talked about this before, they're not... They are not contagious. They're not something to worry about. They're what they break down the, the debris in the body. Basically, to, to any, any tissue will will release a virus that's on, the, on that well, which will be able to get yeah, rid of toxins in the body. No, and you can't. Well, why can't you kill them? Because no, they're not alive. <laughs> Just the other day, I said, "Oh, viruses." Yeah, I said to my friend, "I said, well, why don't antibiotics work on viruses?" He's like, "What do you mean?" I said, "Well, why don't they work?" So I don't know. I said, "And that's the problem. You don't know." You know, the medical industry have known this for, for however long. You don't give antibiotics for a virus. Why? Because they're not alive. Um, and it's just the only way, and it's why they can't be isolated. It's why they have to have other things in the petri dish. It's because yeah. viruses on their own. You know, as you said to your friend, you know, well, go on, I'll, I'll have some Ebola. And he didn't um, reply to you because he doesn't even understand what the fuck it is. Yeah. Um, and, and so, um, no, man, I think it's an interesting conversation just around that for food as well for people because I think people do get um, caught up in things. And people also, because it's such a self-conscious, um, an image-conscious world, putting on a bit of fat uh, to get rid of stuff. When you put on that weight, Tom, did you did you, did you feel better afterwards? Now you come down, yeah. did you get rid of stuff? Yeah. What yeah. was some of the stuff you needed to get rid of? Was it, or was it just accumulation? Just accumulated stuff from, like, you know, from, from being young and also just from, you know, like poor lifestyle up until I was, like, 25 sort of thing. So... There's, uh, oh, 22, you know, like, oh, 20, whatever it was. You know, like, they're going through my teenage years in particular and what my parents fed me when I was a kid. Like, that stuff doesn't just leave the body. It accumulates, and it accumulates deep in the body. And so there's, uh, you, you can just be get to a point. Of layers deep, right? Sorry? You can be thousands of layers deep. But, yeah, sorry, I was just saying. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And some point. of it's hereditary, too, which is stored even deeper. So. Mm-hmm. There's, um, that's a good point actually, because there's also a point at which you don't want to just be detoxing your whole life because realistically it takes 40, it'll take someone 40 years to properly clean out. And so you don't want to go too hard with that and there's better things to do. It's more just like if you're actually inhibited in some way by the toxicity, then yeah, go for it. But if you're not inhibited, if you're still working, playing sport, making love to your partner, you're just like, why go and make your life harder than it needs to be? It's this, you know, do it real slow and real, really gradually, which your body does anyway if you're not getting in the way of it. If you're not, if you're not putting undue amounts of toxins in and taking a lot of drugs and um, just living a poor lifestyle, if you're just in tune with nature and eating natural food, your body's detoxifying anyway. You don't have to do anything like above and beyond what the body already knows how to do. So to me, I think 
Some people can take it definitely way too far and try to go too extreme when you don't need to. And also, um, but yeah, I, I actually started to feel, yeah, just subtly better in different ways with more weight on. And especially because I did it through the winter, it was definitely the warmest I've been through a winter. And, um, yeah. Uh, so what, so, so how long did you do it for, Tom? So I kept, I, it took me a good few months to get a good amount of weight on. I kept it on for about three months. And then I've been uh, over about a three month period of losing it. So, uh, yeah. Cool. That's fine. So just for people. And so what you said, to look, what were some of the things you were going through that you thought, you know what, I need to up it here and, and to clean some more, let my body to go through a, a healing process. Like what were some of the things you were feeling? Cold? No, no, I wasn't feeling, no, I wasn't having issues with that. It was more that, uh, I was getting to a certain point with getting some of the mercury out of the body that, uh, you know, I'd gone through some quite heavy detox, like rashes, blisters, things like that, that I, that meant that there was a lot coming out that was really, really harmful. And that that's kind of the limit. I, my body just knew, like, I just knew, like, that was my limit. I couldn't really handle much more than that. So then putting more weight on allowed me to go and do more hot bars, hot lymphatic bars, because it's a good idea to, like, you need a bit of extra weight to help with that. Um Otherwise, the body will restrict too much. So, yeah, did you get just, blisters come out during this phase? No, no, that was only before it. Um, once I put the weight on, I didn't have any strong detoxification reactions at all, and I think that's one of the reasons why. I think there was enough extra weight to help carry anything that would have been an overly strong reaction: throwing up, diarrhea, blisters, rashes, things like that. So interesting because obviously the body wraps toxins in fat. That's the way. Otherwise, the toxins will hurt the nervous system, etc. Different, um, yeah, all, all, the, all, the, all the systems in the body, organs, etc. So, the body wraps it in fat, and that's how you get down. But it's really interesting. Obviously, you get rid of toxins through breath, sweat, urine, stool, etc. But the majority actually come through your breath. Did you know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, if people wonder wonder the way people get bad breath and things that come in from the gut. A lot of toxins are coming out. So, through this process, did you notice anything like that? Like bad breath? No, because it's, no, because when you, um, the breath, you're right, but it's also like a, uh, there's a few times that'll happen. One is because, like I said, the bacterial levels are changing over. There's too much like toxic stuff there. That's one of the reasons. Another reason is when people haven't eaten. If you ever notice somebody goes, I'm fasting today and you go, yeah, I can tell. <laughs> it's like there's something in their stomach that's coming out. You can smell it. So when you're fed well and you're eating the right foods, you won't actually get the, the breath odor. So it's, um, yeah, and it's also, it's also the fact that you're, you're really running all of the systems well. And if you're running all of the systems well, your skin should smell nice and your breath should smell nice, even if you detox fine. It's mm-hmm. only when those other things are blocked, the lymphatics blocked, um, you, you're not, you're not shitting properly, you're not having the right amount of nutrients to support detoxification, the right amount of fat to help arrest toxins and things like that, that's when you get the odours in body and breath and that sort of thing. Okay, awesome. Do you ever have any, um, do you ever put any fat in your like morning tea? Because I have like some powder dark or quetra pedra or cat's claw teas and do you ever put like raw honey, um, butter in any of them? No, I don't, I don't have teas. I'm not a tea fan. Like a <laughs> I tea. used to drink right. heaps of tea, but once you go onto raw foods, you generally lose the, the need. And it's re- it's funny, you know, the amount of times I've changed my diet over the last 20 years and any time that's like going to something that's going to be different, there's resistance. It's like, oh, I don't want to give up my this because it gives me comfort. And then after a while, what's so, such a comfortable feeling is not having to have comfort. Because tea was a source of comfort for me, a hot drink. I was like, how could I ever go without a hot drink? Like, it's so comforting. And then after you, you're off it, you're like, man, I can't believe, like, how more free I am not having to have a comfort. Mm. Um, and, and it's for, for people, it's different things. Hot drinks, chocolates, like sweet foods, things like that. Once you wean yourself off sweet foods, you're like, holy shit, I'm free. <laughs> yeah, no, no, 100%. I used to, one of the things, like, even at, not, not, so after I'd had a day, uh, working, doing whatever, especially when it was like on your own, you just sit chilling, winding down. And even I'd, I'd have sometimes like, um, on bar, it's a, it's a raw, raw chocolate. Have you heard of it? Um, yeah. Yeah, on bar, like raw, uh, chocolate, maybe coconut milk, um, et cetera, a bit of that. And I used to have one every, every other night or something like that. I'd get used to it. 
I've been out here. Uh, I've had like a couple of desserts when we've gone out for meals with people, and it's just like you come off you're like, just it's weird. Like you just don't need it. And when you, but also when you're in a hotter climate, you're doing things. It's it's just different. Um, yeah. For me, the tea, I don't know. I, I, it's one of the things I don't need it. I I just sometimes say because I was I was power dark I got to put different things like Pedro Pedro's great stone breaker good for the good for the liver and kidneys and so to have it more for, more for that but like yeah. in terms of like um, it's weird when you start understanding you don't need these things and I think it's Carl Jung talks about um, to, to know who your God is um, look at what you can't go without you know Yeah. Uh, and when you said it is, it is a very liberating feeling when you don't need anything um, do not get a craving then for your smoothies because they are they are delicious <laughs> no, I don't get cravings for them. I just I know when my body needs more fat or more calories or something. That's when I'll you know I'll do it. I can definitely go without smoothies. It's funny. It's like that's the one of the things that I got once I actually got into just eating all raw foods and not like adding things to them. Is that I lost the need for? Or oh, I need a spicy meal. I need a hot this or I need a sweet that. Like I really lost all those things and get a lot more. Really, uh, it feels like a much more pure version of um, taste and things from like not doing those things. And occasionally I'll have a tea because like somebody wants me to share it with them and it's like a ceremony or it's like something like that. And without fail, I'll burn like my tongue or the roof of my mouth or something. I'm like, God damn it. But uh, yeah, I definitely don't have, but I'm also not saying they're bad. So that's the other thing. People go, oh, well, yeah. you mustn't have it because it's bad, but it's not. Like yeah. they're good for you. It's just that I don't, it's not part of my palate anymore. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Because there's a lot of benefits to having tea and cooked food and all this other stuff. There's benefits to it. So, yeah, it's important to make that clear. That, that's the thing, because a lot of people, this is why I'm proponent for, well, not a proponent, it depends on where people, this is why people want to, people love a black and white answer. And as any, any person worth their salt in pretty much any profession will tell you, the answer is always, it depends. Yeah. Um, because, so when people talk about, oh, I hear raw food is good for you. I think it was in your book, it actually had like benefits of raw food. I don't have to cook. Yeah. <laughs> 98%, 2% is good for you. And I was like, yeah, yeah. because like the thing is, um, and people talk about the enzymatic production of raw food and how it's alive and how it holds water and, and all that's true. But, but to people like most people, you know, I say to them, and they've got their gut issues and they're eating a lot of raw food. And I'm like, well, what do you think is hard to break down? A cooked carrot? Or a raw one. Go and stick a cook, go and stick a cooked carrot in the blender, right, and see how easy that is to mash. And go and cook, cook a raw carrot in the blender, see how hard that is to. Because you've got no teeth down there. Put your tongue, side of your mouth, that's the same as in your gut, you've got no teeth down there. And you're eating raw food, and you've got a gut issue, and you're wondering why you're in crippling pain. So, like, you need to understand where you're coming from, and you need to have pre digested foods, and there's lots of things you have to go into, and certain things you remove, etc. Yeah. And so, that's what I was asking you, because the meat as well, you never had any issue, but, but again, you don't have, when you have, you drink your, your greens anyway, but you, you have no issues with that, which is fine. But most of the things you're having, even though they're raw, apart from the meat, it's quite soft, and it's been pre digested. So, the eggs, I'm guessing you blend them, or do you just drink, eat them out of the egg shell? Uh, both. I'll put them in smoothies or I'll just eat them out of the shell. Yeah. Or crack them in a glass and drink them. Yeah. And, um, yeah. And do you chew them at all or just swallow them straight down? No, you just swallow it. Yeah. You don't have to, you don't have to chew on anything. It's like, that's the thing though, is that people make the mistake when they go on raw diets. They go like more the raw vegan style and all of that cellulose is not digestible to the body. It's mm. none of it is. That's why you, if you're going to eat whole vegetables, steam them at least. Cook them, steam them. Or ju- juicing is preferable to get the most nutrients, but for digestibility, just don't eat them raw because they're, they're first of all, it's actually toxic and inflammatory, and second of all, it's overly alkalinizing for the digest- digestive tract. So why is it toxic and inflammatory? Uh, there's too many, there, there's, there's too much toxicity in there, too many oxalates, the cellulose that's in there is not digestible by the human body. It's just that, so anything that's not digestible causes inflammation, essentially. And then when it's a, a whole vegetable, it overalkalinizes the digestive tract too far down the digestive tract that's supposed to be acidic to hold the right bacteria because bacteria are dependent on the environment. Then you're not having that. That's why you get bloating and gut problems and, and all that and inflammation is because you overalkalinize the digestive tract because people get too obsessed with alkalinizing and things. So it's like, oh, broccoli, that'll alkalinize me. And they eat it raw and whole. And then they're getting all the oxalates, all the phytotoxins, all the cellulose, 
and over, over and over uh, alkalinizing the digested tract. That's a recipe for disaster right there. As opposed to the raw animal foods, which actually hold the right pH through the digestive tract, and even the meat, that's highly digestible. There's no no one's going to have that. Like people go, oh, you don't digest that. It sits in your stomach for like a week. It's like no, it doesn't. <laughs> it's gone in two hours from the stomach. Just takes a little more effort to digest it. When it's raw, it already has bacteria with it. It's highly digestible. It's not going to block anything up. So, uh, and then if you were weak, it's more if the body's weak. If the body's not making enough digestive enzymes or hydrochloric acid for the stomach, you can bring that up anyway. Eat raw honey, for example, with a meal. That's like nature's highest source of enzymes. Or you're having like lemon juice before you eat or apple cider vinegar with it or something, some prebiotic. You know, anything like that can help to digest food or have papaya or pineapple with it, which help to break down food as well. So there's a lot of different things you can do if your body's weak, but um, somebody that's healthy. And this is a thing like I'm eating a lot of raw food right now, and it's because I've had to undergo a lot of detoxification. You and I, though, if you're eating more cooked food and I'm eating all raw, we're probably going to live to the same age no matter what. Because as you see with smokers and that too, the smokers that smoke till they're 90 years of age and they're still like, you know, having sex with people. It's like it's their mind more than anything and their genetics. It's like people get too obsessed with diet. Diet has a place to serve a specific function, but if you make that the purpose of your life, you're going to die by that. You're going to like be too obsessed with it and not live life. And you know what I mean? Like you're, you can go and meet a girl right now and make love to her. You can go and work now. You can go swimming now. The cooked food isn't harming you in any way, and you're going to do that for the next 50 years. So it's like, you know what I mean? It's not like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm not eating all raw stuff and raw meats. Somehow I'm not going to live a long and fruitful life. That's not the case. Huh. So it's really, if you have specific conditions, that can be the fastest way to heal a specific condition. But for general health, just stay healthy and young here, and you can smoke and drink and eat barbecued food all you like, and you're more than likely still going to have a long and fruitful life. Yeah, it's just, um, well, it's sort of, it goes around, doesn't it? Like, I wouldn't say, it depends on your constitution. You can smoke and drink. If you've got a constitution yeah. of an ox, you'd be a fine. If otherwise, you don't, then you'd have to take, the reason me and Tom do what we do is because we went through our own issues and, you know, most, like most of us scratch our own itch. And I'm, I'm like, so I mix myself around. I have raw fats and, and raw, uh, and different raw meat sometimes then I'll have other things. And, um, my diet, it depends on what I feel like, really. Um, and yeah. since I've been out here, I have had more, I say more fruits. I mean, like, because I'm just, like every morning I can't wait for the fruit because it's so warm out here, right? Yeah. It's so warm. Um, uh, and then we have different things, but we mix it up. Um, and as long as you're healthy and your body can function, and obviously this is why we talk about it anyway, because you don't want to laden your body for those toxins and chemicals. Yeah. Uh, because eventually, you know, it's like blowing up blue. One day it will eventually burst and then you don't want to have to go down this route. But Tom's got his diet because of what he's been through and, uh, and so on. But it works for him. Once you find that, as you said before, once you can live life around that, that's the game changer, right? Because it's just like, yeah. you don't, you don't really, you just, this becomes, it's just what you're doing. You can function, like you go for a run, you, you go surfing a lot, don't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, surfing. What, what else you do? Oh, you do BJJ at the moment, right? Yep. Yeah, I haven't been for quite a while though. Sad other, too much stuff on, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. And so if you can do that and you can function, that's great. Cause I know when I was ill, I couldn't do any of that stuff. I was in a real yeah. bad way. And that's what leads you to clean, clean the debris of your body. And then your body starts to get used to a process that you go through. And then you, you, you'll be healthy. So no, it's a good, it's a good little, I just want to go through that with people because yeah. as you said though, anyway, like unless you need to detoxify or if you feel like yeah. you need to, something, yeah. You, you, yeah. And it's your constitution, like you said, like we all have different tolerances to certain things, different strengths. Some people withstand cold or heat better than others, regardless of diet. And then you've got like, you could take you or I trying to get the world's most perfect diet. And then Usain Bolt eats six chicken nuggets before he sets a world record in the, you know, it's like, it's genetics and constitution more than, more than anything I think people don't realize. And they try too hard to reach perfection, but you can never reach perfection. So, uh, just being a bit more relaxed about stuff can go a long way. Yeah. And if you do have any issues and you need help, you know, just give us one of us a shout and we'll help you. But if yeah. not, then yeah. And the thing is with, with that, it's like, it's a real, I think you, I think you said before, and I know it's like the same. A lot of athletes succeed in spite of their strength coaches. A lot of athletes yeah. succeed in spite of their 
diet because of what they like up here, etc. And then when they get that right, it's no problem, it's no coincidence that someone like Ronaldo in football stays at the top of his game for 15 years because not only has he got the mentality, but he eats well, he does all these things. And um, and if you do that, you are going to push yourself into that next level. But yeah. don't let it become a burden on you because stressing about things is worse for you than actually, you know, not having them. Um, but I yeah. think it was, it was a good good conversation there, Tom. I wanted to just get into that just for people out there because it's so you. We've been talking before, and I've seen you like cracking stuff and doing whatever. So I was just interested to see what like a, a day in your. You know, do you ever have any? Do you ever have um, any like sweets or cakes or chocolates or? You ever have like a, a beer yeah. or anything like that every now and again? No, uh, well, I just don't like alcohol. It's just like a thing that's my body just doesn't like it. So, and I don't really like the taste of it either. So I don't. Yeah, that's just not even on the on my radar. No sweets if I ever wanted. I mean, the other thing I have is like milk that I I get raw milk and I make kefir from it. Mm-hmm. And then um, you know that with honey and cinnamon, that's like the nicest thing to me. I, I don't need anything that's like sweeter than that or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and what else? Yeah, no, I don't. I don't have any. That's the thing. It's like the more you get onto a natural diet, the less yeah. you want things like a cake or an alcohol, like a treat. But they're not like treats to me. Like even Paul Check, he has. He is. He's like he's badly reactive to things like corn and wheat. Mm. And but he's like, oh man, I just sometimes I want a big bag of corn chips. And he's mm. like, but I'll deal with the pain that I feel after it. And I'm like, I, I wouldn't want to do that. Mm. <laughs> and Paul's like the top of the game sort of thing. But that's not for me. Yeah, yeah, he popcorn and stuff like that. So he gets a reaction to that. He's got a deep fungal infection that won't go away. Mm. Um, and so you have to like, yeah, and and uh, yeah, no, I I agree. It's one of those things. Once you get to the thing, so I yeah, it's um with this with the sweetness. Like once you once you get into this, your palate changes and different levels of sweetness. Like if you can taste a bit of like I think it was at Christmas. Someone gave me a, a I can't remember what it was. Something something like a a celebration or something like that that I hadn't had for ages because I usually have my stuff mm. and I had tasted it I was like my god that is it was chocolate I was like that isn't chocolate I don't know yeah. what that is that, that's so sweet <laughs> it was like yeah it was just ridiculous it was like um, it's like a narcotic yeah because like because honey is sweet but it's delicious and it's a food right yeah. um and it's it's just it's just, it's sweet but it's like smooth and silky and it and it's got something about it whereas this was just like yeah, and it shows how bad people's palates are. That it has to be mm-hmm. that sweet to even for people to even think that that's normal. You know, not just uh, sweet, but stimulating. It's like a mm-hmm. chemical stimulant thing. It's like it's like napalm or something. It's just like well, not napalm, but it's it's literally oh, like yeah, a narcotic. Yeah. It's probably like putting heroin or coke in your mouth. It's like well, yeah, and, co- and coffee, which people do every day. Mm-hmm. Like people do, yeah, uh, it's like a it's a drug, and uh, people do it every day. It's funny how some drugs are. I've, I've seen as fine in society, right? And some drugs aren't. And you've yeah. got like alcohol and coffee that people have most days. A lot of people have most yeah. days. Um, and then you've got others that aren't. It's, it's, it's weird how they've set the whole system up, right? And how people's moral compass is like, and it's not like tobacco. The Red Indians used to smoke tobacco. Tobacco wasn't a problem. Um, it was the things that the tobacco was wrapped in. You know, it's like every cigarette, yeah. it's like three to eight thousand chemicals, depending on what brand you get. Things like chocolate in it, things that keep you heavily addicted. Um, yeah. and so, yeah, this is, uh, this, that's the other thing I was going to say. All these experts that are talking to you about coronavirus and stuff, it's like these are the same experts that were saying you smoking was fine. Uh, and this brand of cigarettes is sponsored by the, the, the doctors, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> It's just amazing, right? And you get people, um, and, and all the people that come out and call bullshit for it is get censored. But, mate, it's been a good conversation. Um, anything else you want to add? Uh, no, just, uh, I think, you know, everything we've spoken about, it's got a lot to do with, uh, just using some common sense, taking responsibility for yourself as always. Common sense isn't common. Also, I'd say common sense actually today is having no sense. So, does that make sense? Common, yeah. Most people have common sense because they've got no sense. So yeah. just have actual sense. Um, yeah. That's what I Yeah, actual sense. I like that. That's a good point. <laughs> but when it comes to anything, like how are you dealing with the world? How are you feeding yourself? How are you doing? It all kind of relates, you know. It's just that, just, yeah, just like lose all the dogmatic kind of indoctrinated stuff and you'll be all right. Awesome, mate. Always a pleasure, Tom. And where so we've got so we've got obviously you on Facebook, Tom Barnett. Um, you're on yep. Instagram, uh, Global by Dynamics. Is it Global? No, that's uh, no. Everything's Tom Barnett TV on uh, on uh, Instagram. Well, I think Instagram is the only one, but Instagram and uh, YouTube and Facebook's just my name, and then Tom Barnett TV is the website. 
So uh, people yeah. just need to go on, go on the mailing list for that for the time being until we've got approval from the because we've we've tried two platforms and they just weren't going to work out and they've censored other people on their platforms. So we're like, oh, no, yeah. can't have that. So we're we're really close to launching the site, but it's just the mailing list for now. What you wait? What you wait? Well, so you, what what are you waiting for? Like a, a video platform, so like that BitChute or a library or something like that. No, no, we've got I've got stuff. The site's already got the content on it. I've already done it, but we're just waiting for approval from the uh, the kind of host thing with the all the tech okay. side of it, just to make sure that people can't pull it down after we launch it. We want to make sure before we actually launch it, there's no way anyone can take it down or censor the platform. So that's what the holdup has been, but it's basically it's almost there now. So perfect, awesome, my man. Absolute pleasure speaking to you, Tom. And um, yeah, you too. Are we looking forward to speaking to you again? Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. See you, man. So, guys, that was episode 176 with Tom Barnett, and I think you'll get so much from that. It was a really fun conversation, great interview, and you know, Tom will be back on the show. Hopefully, it's given you some positivity too. You know about what we can do coming together, really creating communities, um, and also a lot of insight into into Tom, the way he eats, and you know why he, he went through that route. Um, and why he does what he does and there's certain principles that we both share and certain things that I do differently to him but um, I mean the way the way that he eats really works and he said before if, if you're dealing with an issue it's, it can be a way that you can can be a path you go down but if you're generally healthy there's certain things you don't need to go to the extremes that he he did um, when he talked about and uh, gaining weight as well to, to get rid of toxins it's something that people don't want to do a lot of the time because they have a particular self image but sometimes you have to put on some extra fat to get rid of that toxins because because it's how the body actually processes them so yeah really interesting conversation with Tom uh, and I'm really looking forward to his his, uh, his channel coming out uh, and his new website so when that gets live uh, I'll be letting you know um, as always guys and girls if you are dealing with a chronic health issue and you haven't been able to get any help from the doctors, consultants, and quote-unquote specialists, and you're still living in pain, and you actually would like to start living life on your terms again, then please don't hesitate to give me an email at ryan at reviveyourself.co. That's ryan at reviveyourself.co. And I'll get back to you as soon as possible, and we can discuss how we can help you overcome your issues. Also, you've got the option of you know buying my book, The Chronic Fatigue Solution. You can find that at www.reviveyourself.co too, and that will give you the basics into everything around health, healing, and what causes disease and, and chronic fatigue. Um, and also, guys and girls, if you can please do me a favor and leave a five-star review on iTunes or comment, share, and like this interview, anyone you think would need it, that would be great so we can get this information out to as many people as possible because my mission for a long time has been to change a million lives. And we were well on the way to doing that. And if you, if you can help, that would be fantastic. Uh, otherwise, guys and girls, that's it for this week. As always, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye. If you're struggling with gut issues, such as gas, bloating, constipation, diarrhea, indigestion, heartburn, and want to finally be able to eat the foods you love without the crippling after effects, then don't forget to head over to reviveyourself.co and pick up your free copy of The Healing Health Paradigm today. 